celebrating our 20th year of live college football. We welcome you to ESPN's College Football Thursday on a snowy night in Provo, Utah. A huge program game for 7-1 Boise State of the WAC against the old king of the WAC, 4-5 BYU. Well, this little uh, three, four month old is as warm as can be. And it may not be good enough tonight. It is just cold chilling. The temperature has dropped 43 degrees in 24 hours. Wind chill of 25, snow showers throughout the night. I don't think we're going to see inches of snow, but just so it looks pretty and will affect the game a little bit. 46-year-old <laughs> Gary Croton, head coach of Brigham Young, has a young team in certain spots. Quarterback injuries have really gotten this team off the track, but they're trying to get back to 500. Coming off a win against UNLV. Season started promising with a win over Georgia Tech. Lost at USC, but a lot of people have done that. Their losses, you see, Stanford, Air Force, that stretch where they lost four out of five until beating UNLV. Opposite number on the other side for Boise State. Man, you heard from at the top of the show, 42-year-old Dan Hawkins. Third year here, took over, took over from Dirk Cutter when Cutter moved to Arizona State. Hawkins has a Zen philosophy off the field. On the field, he likes to go downfield with it. Very successful, only the two-point loss at Oregon State, but with this caveat. The Division 1A teams they've played, a combined record of 19-37. Their toughest games are ahead. With Dr. Jerry Punch, who's the guy who gets the short end of the straw tonight down on the field. Lee Corso, Kirk Herb Street up in the booth. Mike Tirico, glad you are here for this game. BYU will kick it off. Boise State in white to receive. Give us a headline, guys, before we kick it off here. That's well, going to be interesting here to see Boise State. Anytime they get an opportunity to play on national TV, it's almost like they feel as a program this is a chance to make a statement. They're going to get the ball early. Remember, they're coming off a game last week where they put a lot of points on the board. To me, I think the quarterback that can handle the weather will be the determining factor. Reminds me of Grossman in Florida when he beat Tennessee because he handled the weather the best. Chris Carr is set to receive the kickoff from Matt Payne, and off we go in the snow on College Football Thursday. Far from one yard out. Has a nice crease and has some room to run across the 30. BYU players have the angle on him and push him out of bounds. With a nice 40-yard return. Good field position to start the game. Joshua Brandon made the tackle for BYU. So here comes three-year starter Ryan Dinwiddie. Other than his size, is all the intangibles to be a pro quarterback. Ryan Dinwiddie leads a Boise State offense that has scored 40 points four times this year. They scored 77 against San Jose last week, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is worth a yoke. It certainly is. 77-14. They beat San Jose. They say Dinwiddie only played one series in the second half. Opening drive that starts from the 41. And on the reverse, Tim Gilligan wants to walk on. Now they're leading pass catcher. Seven to the 47-yard line. The Bud Light starting lineups. You have Gilligan, one of the receivers, along with Smith. They're both walk-ons. They combined for 66 receptions and eight touchdowns. Tim Gilligan and Jerry Smith, two very good wide receivers who we'll see here tonight. David Michael is their running back, and he's going to line up as the one back here for this second down. And Dinwiddie will go to the air for the first time. Steps up. He'll gain about a yard. The umpire took the worst of that. Robert Collins, one of the Mountain West officials working this game, really got caught up there in the mix. There are the men with Michael and Swenson in the backfield. Schumann, a freshman tight end, and the two walk-ons, Smith and Gilligan, who have become senior key contributors. Playing the best ball of the season up front, this offensive line. Darren College, best to the group, a sophomore out of Alaska. He's a second-year starter. He has a good matchup tonight. Brady Papinga, the defensive end for BYU. Third down and four. Dinwiddie's toss is incomplete, and it's three and out. BYU brought some heat, and the pressure came from Levi Madriana. So they will kick it away. You can see early in this game, BYU feels for them to get pressure on Dinwiddie, they're going to have to bring a lot of people. Last two plays, good calls there by the defensive coordinator, Bronco Mendenhall, bringing that pressure to slow down this Bronco offense. Freshman punter, Kyle Stringer, averaging 41 yards per kick. Gets a nice one away. Toby Christensen, fair catching at the 11-yard line. They did not interfere with his opportunity to catch the ball. So no flag. A 41-yard punt 
and no return. Matt Berry, the BYU quarterback, broke his right hand in week three. He missed four games. Kirk, this kid who grew up a Washington fan in Microsoft territory, Redmond, Washington, is BYU's quarterback. Well, Matt Berry has battled through the injuries this year, and he's healthy as he's probably as he's been since the injury coming into tonight. The big thing about Matt is he, he, he kind of is a calming influence for this offense because of his experience and maturity. Tonight, though, he's going to have to settle in and make some very accurate throws against a defense that's going to try to put a lot of pressure on him. They're also shorthanded in the backfield. They yep. start out of the shotgun from their own 11. There he's looking underneath, and the pass is complete. Seven yards to the 18 for Chris Hale, sophomore receiver. They went three receivers there, Wilkerson and Toby Christensen, son of our former colleague Todd Christensen with Waylon Vakapuna, and coach a good freshman tight end. Up front, pay attention to the guards, Mohatel and Caressa. They are both freshmen, they're both huge, and Gary Croton thinks they are future stars. Second and four after the pickup officially of six. Gary on the toss to Fulai Vakapuna. They'll get about a yard. Chris Carr, the rover, was on top of a swarm of Boise defenders. Here is the four men up front. Here are the four men. Not much pressure from this group. Oldham, the senior from San Diego. Fires haven't affected his hometown. He wants to be a fireman when all's done. Berger, Hall, and Avalos are the linebackers. Three-year starter and top tackler is Avalos. The key guy back here, Brown and Franklin on the corners. They'll be on an island because they play lots of man-to-man. -man. West Nurse, the free safety, sticks his nose in the run game and blitzes a lot. His number 21. It's third and three. And Barry's throw is incomplete. On a pass intended for his backup tight end, Philip New. So they'll kick it away. And both teams go three and out to open the ball game. And one of the interesting things also in weather like this is how the punters can handle a snap. They come off the field, they haven't been able to get ready, loosen up, sometimes they drop it, or the center snaps it right over their head. We're short, be careful right now. Heaviest snow of the uh, late afternoon and evening now falling as Matt Payne, a very good kicker here in the Mountain West, set to boot it away. There's a high snap there. Payne pulls down, and it's blocked, and Boise State Put gas touchdown. It was very close to the end line. Chris Carr with the block. Boise recovers for the touchdown. The bad snap leads to Cam Hall with the score. Six nothing. Boise State. That's exactly the point I made before because what happens is that ball is wet and the center usually snaps it real high because he tries to get a lot of it. Kurt, there he goes, right over the head almost. It wasn't so much the punter grasping. It was yeah. just a poor snap. It was high and Boise State got a, a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of pressure on the inside there and got to where they had to, to to make the play. Cam Hall just barely able to gain control of that wet sliding ball before hitting the end line. A good call, though, on the touchdown. Tyler Jones, the Boise State kicker, points it off the upright and through. It will be an adventure in the snow in Provo tonight. Gary Croton's team. Good on the defense, three and out. The struggle on the other end. The punt block by Chris Carr. Touchdown. College football Thursday presented by Panasonic. A very snowy. It's hard to believe it was 72 degrees <laughs> in Provo yesterday. A beautiful day. And now these snow showers. Weather a factor. The kick block for the touchdown. 7-0 as Boise State takes an early lead and kicks off to BYU. Going to try to hit the hole hard, but James Allen was brought down at the 20 by Terrell Hall. Lee, how about your Under Armour coaching advantage for tonight? Well, BYU's new offensive formation is no huddle. They put it in a week ago Monday and scored 27 points. It looks sharp. They love it. On Boise State side, they got an explosive offense. They're the top five in the nation, scoring, total yards, and passing. Yo! That's another yo. What's amazing is last year they led the nation in scoring offense. Yes. They lost so many people off the offensive side of the ball, and yet here they are back again, putting up big numbers. First and ten from the 20. Snow starting to accumulate on this natural grass surface. Here's Vakapuna. 
The freshman gains about four. Let's go see how bad it's getting down there with Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, Michael, this field is a very lush uh, Kentucky bluegrass. Actually, the grass is about two, two and a half inches long. And the, the longer the grass, the wetter it gets, the slicker it gets. The earlier the, the snow begins to accumulate now. But earlier tonight, uh, they used, they turned the sprinklers on to try to melt the snow. And they wet this field down. And so that means when you put a... When you put a football down to try to snap it on a long snap, the football gets wet on the mountain with the cause of the thick grass. So a very slick condition here early on tonight. That certainly contributed to the problems a moment ago. Passes wait for Christensen behind him and incomplete. So we'll have third down coming up. Back to Doc. I talked to uh, Dan Hawkins in pregame. He walked out here as they were watering the field and just stopped in amazement and shook his head. He said, uh, and you see him this earlier this afternoon. He said, I can't believe I have never seen him do this. It started to snow. They turned the sprinklers on and what was already a very thick, uh, lush, uh, uh, somewhat slippery turf. And now it's wet, even though it has a sand base. So uh, he said, I've never seen him ever do that. And I've played a lot of games in the snow. Yeah, it was an hour 55 before kickoff. We all looked at each other up here going, <laughs> Is that hot water? Please explain that to me. Third down. Matt Berry has lots of time. Can he find somebody streaking free? No, the coverage was good. Chris Hale was trying to get open. But all the way around, solid coverage. Travis Berger, a linebacker, was back there on the play. And they'll punch it away. And we'll watch the snap again. John Denny is an experienced long snapper. It was his snap that got away and led to the block punt. Sometimes psychologically when a center has a high snap, he lets up on it a little bit and it skids back there. Carr blocked the first one trying to get in for this Matt Payne kick. Perfect snap. Payne able to get it away. Not exactly easy to see it either. Gilligan takes it on the bounce at the 27 and gets up the field and out of bounds at the 42 yard line. So, good field position for Boise State, and Survival Saturday comes her way with Michigan, Michigan State at noon Eastern, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, 3.30 Eastern, and out West Washington State, USC on ABC, and on ESPN, which is also available on ESPN HD, Miami and Virginia Tech. Survival Saturday on ABC Sports and ESPN, just some of the games. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. It'll be a great week to get the ESPN game plan as well. Oh. Shut it down at home and take over the TV room for 10 hours if you can. <laughs> we'll write you a note giving you permission. From the 43, first down run for David Michael. The pound it forward for about five David Michael, the ball carrier, number three. Michael's gained 761 yards on the season. Those are the three big games at the top of Survival Saturday. Don't forget the cocktail party with Georgia and Florida playing, of course, in Jacksonville. Just some of the games that Florida State Never plays seen. at Notre Dame, Ohio State at Penn State, the Buckeyes trying to stay in position, Nebraska at Texas, also a big game in that early window at the same time as the Spartans and Wolverines in East Lansing. Second and five, and Michael he stopped at about the 49-yard line. So BYU's defense with a good hit, Ifo Pili, the senior out of Orem, Utah, and Brady Papinga up front. Healy is one of those guys they call a giant. He's 6'3", 325 pounds. And they said he was the toughest of all the defensive line, linemen to knock off the ball. This would be a great game for him. He's but nice and snugly down in there. He can just <laughs> bang people around, Kurt. But BYU is taking advantage of these tendencies by the formations. They're, they're bringing a lot of people up in these running situations. Third and four. Dinwiddie has time to throw. He looks deep for Gilligan. Inbounds and caught at the 22. First down. He did it in front of Chad Barney. A gain of 30. Well, anytime you get a commit and take some chances, give a little bit of a cushion on the outside, and you give a quarterback like Dinwiddie enough time. He's a rhythmic quarterback. He knows what he's looking at, and the coaches told us they're going to come after Chad Barney. He's there. The ball is thrown right over the shoulder of Gilligan. That shows you a little bit of the accuracy that we've heard so much about with Ryan Dinwiddie. They love this formation. Two tight ends, two receivers. The lone back, Michael, who finds a little crease, gets past the would-be Peely tackle, and is tackled by true freshman David Nixon 
inside the red zone. So the BYU defense must step up here and play a 3-3-5 with Papinga, who moves all around. He led the league in sacks last year. Peely and John Denny up front. The linebacking core, Nixon, a true freshman out of College Station, Texas. Mike Tanner is the emotional leader. Buckwald has great speed. DB, 33, Francisco, a key guy. Defense build around him. By the way, those Ks are for Cougars. They are like safeties in this 3-3-5. Second and five, Michael tried to run through the cornerback, Barney, but he got down to the 11-yard line. You can watch boys, he stayed automatically see one thing. They do a lot of fake reverses and reverses. And in weather like this with the ability not to see as well, Kirk, I like that concept of inside and then reverses and fake the reverses and give it to him. Sometimes they use deception with his yeah. offense. You know, in talking with Coach uh, Hawkins, their head coach, he said that we're a team that's going to attack. We're very aggressive with our mindset. And we're not going to pull back. You're going to see us take some chances. Look at this. They break the huddle and bring out a uh, different quarterback as well it's Jared Zabransky a better runner and Zabransky moves to the five and pulls to the two yard line so the freshman out of Hermiston Oregon comes in they came out of the huddle with Dinwiddie and three other players and come in with this running quarterback Zabransky who's carried ten times now on the season we just talked about the creativity and how they're going to take some chances this this was a play that looked like they're going to just go to the floor, go to the line of scrimmage at the last second. The line goes to the line of scrimmage, but a whole different group of backs and a quarterback comes to the line. It's a branch. You can see right there when he turns the corner, he knows what to do with the football in his hands. First and goal, Michael up the middle. Touchdown, Boise State. So the good punt return gave them nice field position, and Boise State. Worked it on the ground. The big pass to Gilligan of 30 yards. Got him down there. And two touchdowns in 4.06 against Gary Croton's BYU team. You know that term, basketball on grass? This mm -hmm. Boise State offense is definitely dictating the tempo and keeping this Cougar defense on its heels. Different formations, different plays, running, throwing, pretty much doing what they want at this point. Tyler Jones banked the first one in, squishes the second one. Michael's touchdown, his eighth of the year, and in the snow at Provo, it's all the guys from Idaho. ESPN's College Football Thursday, presented by Panasonic DVD Recorder. Watch whatever, whenever you want. Panasonic, ideas for life. And in part by Saturn, makers of the highly adaptable view. Redesigned L-Series, and the fun-to-drive Ion. Back in Provo, Utah, with Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, and Dr. Jerry Punch, Mike Tirico, just after 6 o'clock Mountain Time on this first snowy night of the year in Provo. It's been incredibly dry and warm through the fall. Uh, it's a little chilly for BYU fans. Down 14, halfway through the opening quarter. James Allen spins at the 25, and he's brought down at the 30, on the kick return. A very good scoring drive for Boise State. They did it with Michael, the touchdown maker for the eighth time this year. But guys, the big play, Dinwiddie, the third yard completion to Tim Gilligan. Well, Boise State, as mentioned at the beginning by Jerry, last two games against San Jose State, they hung up 77, 45 at SMU. They have completely dominated teams. And once they get rolling, they uh, really have a solid swagger about them. Very confident bunch with a lot to prove here tonight. Freshman Thomas Stansill is the running back. 15th carry of the season for Stansill. And he gets out to about the 34-yard line. Chris Carr blocked the punt in the first quarter, made the tackle. We should mention that Stansill and Marcus Whalen are going to have to carry the load as running backs tonight. Because Ronaldo Brathwaite, Jr. has really come on, averaging five and a half a carry. He uh, has been hobbled by knee and hand problems. His team has also been bitten by the flu bug during this week. And we are very unlikely to see Brathwaite here tonight. Bakapuna is the lone back. Barry lost the snap. He recovered it. We also have a penalty marker down from the line judge at the line of scrimmage. So 
sorting out the flag. Well, BYU needs to not only get something going to try to stop the bleeding here, but talking to BYU's coaches, they, they'll tell you that you know the, the Boise State defense plays off of their own offense. When things are clicking on, on the offensive side of the ball for Boise State, typically that means the Boise State defense is going to bring a lot of pressure, especially if BYU gets into a third down situation. You can bet they will blitz and play man, just trying to disrupt Matt Berry with his wide receivers. See what Gerald Wright has for us here. Illegal formation, offense, five yard penalty, still second down. Ron Collins, a defensive coordinator from Boise State, it's his second year there. He has 12 years' experience at Washington University in St. Louis, and he brought that philosophy that fits in perfect, perfect with the Boise State offensive philosophy, which is attack people at all times. Boise made the correct decision there, declining the penalty to uh, give BYU a third down. Look for BYU here, Mike. Kind of go back to their traditional stuff, crossing routes, underneath routes on third down to try to set up a rub route. Barry will do it out of the shotgun. Coverage from West Nurse and Gabe Franklin. And BYU will have to punch it for the third time here in the first 8-13. Well, they're protecting Barry here, and they're giving him time. We mentioned the rub routes underneath, and he had one man open but decided to go downfield, which would have taken a perfect throw to slide it in there. And actually, that was a perfect place to throw the ball against cover two. It was right in the spot. It's just with this weather, Barry couldn't handle the hit. That's all. Third punt opportunity for Payne. One blocked. The other one got off okay. Getting rid of it quick. Good kick. 52 yards through the hands of Gilligan, who picks it up and is brought down at the 13-yard line by Nate Solberg, the reserve defensive back. BYU needs Boise State to share the ball with them in terms of a turnover to try to help gain some momentum back in this game. We mentioned that Nate Solberg, number 13, he was the 100-meter Mountain West outs door champion yeah. and you could tell right then Mike he had terrific speed and made a good coverage on that play. There is Nate stay on the field with this uh, BYU defense and a West Valley City so many players on this team from Utah. Dinwiddie will bring out his Boise State high powered attack and the BYU fans know the defense needs to pick it up or else they're going to be in trouble. From the 13, Dinwiddie takes off and picks up about three. Yes. The chasing Brady Papinga got him on the head on the way over. Well, tomorrow night, NBA doubleheader for you, as we'll have almost every Friday night on ESPN. Starts with the Kia Shooter out at 7.30 Eastern. T-Wolves and Nets. You'll see Garnett and Kidd and an Allen Iverson and the Sixers in Sacramento to take on the Kings. The NBA on ESPN. Last night in Sacramento, LeBron James, 45 minutes, 25 points, including a good field goal night, 10 field goals, led his team's in minutes, points, assists, and steals. Quite an impressive debut for LeBron. Second and seven for Boise. Michael with the carry. He'll only gain a yard. We'll have third and about six coming up. Actually, Mike, there was, uh, I saw, saw on Sports Center late last night, it was the, the best performance ever by a kid coming out of high school directly. Yes. The Stoudemire guy from right where I live, what's his first name? Amari Stoudemire. Amari Stoudemire. He had 10 points in his opener, but he came off the bench. Yes. And uh, this was the greatest performance ever by a kid right out of high school now, into the NBA. Not only statistically, but to see him on the floor, how calm. It's like he's just made to do this. Yeah. No Don't pressure. Pitch. Just go out and play the game. Best line of the night was Dan Marley, our new colleague, who said he's got the best body of anybody out there. Who's the starters are out there. He looks good. Third and six. They need to get to the 23 to keep the drive alive. The senior Dinwiddie takes off to run for it. He tried to slam the ball down near the line. But he will be stopped and marked just short of it. It is where the ball is when your knee hits the ground. That's what the officials looking for on the mark. Brady Papinga makes the tackle that forces BYU to kick it away. Yeah. 
second one for Kyle Stringer out of Humble, Texas. Made the journey to beautiful Boise. Toby Christensen. Oh, high snap over his head. Out of the end zone, safety. That would have been the best thing that could have happened for BYU snap. But it happens here, and they gain some momentum back. It's now 14 to 2. And also the advantage here is the fact they're going to have to kick from the 20-yard line, which will give them, should give them good field position. It's pretty obvious that special teams, just snaps, are going to be an adventure tonight. It looks like he overpowered that. I mean, it didn't look well, like it slipped out of his hands. But you know what? That's what happened in adverse weather. The, the centers are always psychologically thing, right? working on their heads. They either throw it too hard, then they'll skip. Mark, mark my words, it won't be long, that they'll be skipping them back because they're afraid of throwing over their head. Kevin Lausma, the uh, senior yeah. tight end, who was the punt deep snapper, sent that one. And Stringer at five foot eight is not a tall punter, so he really had no chance to go up and get it about seven feet over his head. Lausman, they tried so hard to get this kid a touchdown last week when they were up big on San Jose State. He's really just a blocking tight end. He hasn't caught a ball. They gave him an opportunity to run it and try to run it in from a yard out, and he was stopped. <laughs> but uh, here, the snap over the head makes it 14-2. Let's go down to the sideline and check in with Dr. Jerry Pox. Guys, Mike Dominguez is normally the deep snapper for uh, for the Broncos of Boise State, but he had a wrist surgery, he had a navicular bone fracture, had a pin put in it, and on, on the snapping hand. Now, he is here tonight and trying to practice early on. He may come in and snap, but it's his snapping hand. He can't flex his wrist, but he was wearing a cast. They take the cast off long enough for him to snap and put it back on for him to play. All right, Doc, free kick. They choose to punt it with Stringer. He kicked it 57 yards. See why you can get a return. And able to get up the field was Michael Alba, defensive back. So BYU will take over at its own 33-yard line. Certainly not the crowd you would normally see here. They support BYU so well in Lavelle Edwards Stadium, named after the great head coach of the Cougars. He retired three years ago and turned it over to Gary Croton who worked here and learned from Lavelle among his stops. Croton was the head coach at Louisiana Tech and played Boise State a couple of times when he was down in Buster. Fui Vakapuna. The freshman carries it for about four yards. Robbie Brasco, the quarterback coach, who actually was a quarterback here when he won a national title, will signal in to the quarterback right now he'll give him the play now if he doesn't like it he will come back with another play but if he says it's okay he points both fingers to the ground that means snap the ball and go it's a nice system they put it in in three days second down for the sophomore Barry throws to Christensen complete so on the first down Kobe took a shot on that one okay. the able to get up to finish that point Todd Bradford, the receiver coach, is upstairs. He's talking to Robbie Brasco right now, and they're talking about the kind of play. He will signal in right now to the quarterback exactly what he wants. Right there, that's what he wants. And then, that's the signal. Stretch, pointing it down. Which, I don't know what the point down, Kirk. Do you have any idea what that is? No, means? I'm just following along here. This is good stuff, good I'm stuff. telling you. <laughs> Now, they put this in. Most teams use it for the entire spring practice. Yeah, yeah. They put it in in four days. And the reason why they did it is because they look so good against the, uh, they look so good against Wyoming in the last series. They said, why don't we do this all the time? A little bit of confusion there. So they take a timeout. Four and one left. Opening quarter. 14-2. Gary Croton's team trying to get back in it. Imagine a place where dynamic learning and a picturesque setting come together. Experience award-winning faculty, state-of-the-art technology, and the very best in academic programs. Explore a vibrant capital city where job and internship opportunities abound in government, healthcare, industry, and the arts. Discover Boise State University, where dreams become reality. Boise State University, real education for the real world. Poetry of the Cougar Snow Angel. He's trying to do a little bit extra to make another ESPN commercial. A little mascot challenge. 14-2, Boise State. 
leading BYU. I hope that's warm because it's not attractive. First and 10 from the 43-yard line as we resume play. And Hardy and Royal all bundled up for this cool night. Side handoff to Whitman. Then the junior, Marcus, gets about nine yards on that first down carry. Tackled by Andy Avalos. Well, Lee, you talked about Robbie Bosco taking over the play calling and signaling in the plays. That would be a tough move for the head coach, Gary Crook. Here is Croton. He's got to call the plays by himself. He was so into the offense. And now Croton sits there and has to watch Bosco call the plays when he was the offensive guru when he arrived here. Here is Barry. Option downfield covered, and he threw that one away. Lee, do you think that's part of the pressure that maybe it was on the coach with you got to do something when things aren't going right. You've lost four of your last five. No, I think what happened to Gary is he felt like that uh, Robbie Bosco and Todd Bradford came along enough that he could turn it over to him. But I said to him yesterday, how you feel? He said, it's killing me. He wants to go back there. But once you make a decision like that, you cannot go back. He's got to stay with it. Remember one thing about this guy, Coden. He is an offensive genius. And all of a sudden, they don't score, and he's done. Forget about it. Carry on third down, not able to get the first down. As Whalen trying to stick it up in there between the tackles. So it'll be fourth down. Let's see how far they have. You know, the other thing that Robbie Bosco brings to the table, Paul, the plays is, is familiarity with the system, not only that Gary wants to run, but also what BYU has done for so long. And in fact, he said to us last night that they've tried to bring in some of the old traditional BYU pass plays and incorporate it with what Gary Croton wants to do. So one block, a couple successful. This is the fourth punt for Matt Payne, fourth attempt in four possessions. Picking up their first couple of first downs in the night. BYU is stopped. John Denny's good snap. Try to pin Boise State inside the 10, but Gilligan got the hop right to him. And has a lot of room. Nice jump by Gilligan on the run. The kicker had to push him out at the 38-yard line. So the ball bounced perfectly. The baseball room service hop to Gilligan. He took off and returned at 33 yards. Important game for Gilligan, the senior, and the quarterback, Dinwiddie. I asked Ryan earlier today the importance for the program and personally of this game. Thursday night game is pretty well watched, and, you know, everybody knows about BYU, and I think people are just starting to know about Boise State. And, uh, and we started up from pretty much nowhere four years ago, and uh, we're trying to get there and be like BYU is and really be around the nation. Everybody knows what Boise State is, and we feel like we're getting there. This is only the 33rd year of football for Boise State. They moved into Division 1A in 1996 after a good run in 1AA. This down carry for Donnie Heck. Hard running by the junior out of Idaho for nine yards before John Burbage is able to bring him down. Boise State just reminds me of a team. To, it, it's, it, playing in the WAC is like playing in the MAC. And Lee and I, in game day, we were there last weekend. When you play in a conference that doesn't get the recognition, when you get an opportunity to make a statement for your program and for your team this year, you want to take advantage of it. And Coach Hawkins has a philosophy about starting fast and finish. And the fact they've jumped out 14-2, to two, don't expect them to let up on the play call. They're going to keep attacking and treat, keep trying to capitalize on the opportunity to play tonight on national TV. Here is Gilligan who has the punt return. He gets the first down across midfield and to the 48-yard line. They are certainly being aggressive. Once again, they brought some players out of the huddle and changed them with personnel on the sideline. Here's what the WAC looks like now, team-wise and standings with Boise State at the top. Good teams in Hawaii, Nevada, and Fresno State. Those are the last three opponents for Boise State, so nothing is set and done. Tulsa, Louisiana Tech, and on down through the rest of the WAC. From the 48, the first down, and heck, able to get about a yard. Colby Buckwall, senior out of Sunset, Utah, third on this team in tackles, made the play. It's a Boise State program that last year, the Humanitarian Bowl went up against a Big 12 opponent, Iowa State, and not only won, but won pretty convincingly, and that was a, a team that kind of last year, Iowa State early in the year, kind of making some noise, and Boise State uh, 
went out there. I, I can't. I think it's a chip on their shoulder. Pro, programs yes. like Boise yes. State play with a chip on their shoulder when they get an opportunity. They played Oregon State earlier this year and had that same opportunity. Came up just a little bit short. Didn't win throw. Is caught perfectly ladled in there to T.J. Acre, the junior out of Pocatello, his 30th catch on the season. The officials having a conversation if it was complete or not. If it's good, it's 29 yards. It looks like he uh, came down with possession, and then it rolled out. Oh, they say incomplete now. They will wave it off, and it is an incomplete pass. Let's get another look at it. And then when he slides it between the safety, Allen, and the corner, it's like the ground, the, ground, well, the ground caused the ball to come out after he was down. He rolled over. Yeah. And it came yeah. out. That's a catch. I don't know what about that. Couldn't have been a catch, actually. I was impressed with Dinwiddie's ability to throw the ball in a little spot. Right between the safety <laughs> and the corner. Back. Just a little window, and he put it right in there. So, BYU gets a break there. And third and ten now coming for Boise. Deflected and incomplete. Daniel Markport, sophomore in Vista, California, the big nose guy, 315 pounder, gets a pass breakup. And Boise will kick it away. That looks good in the team stats, doesn't it? it does. <laughs> uh, Markport is just going to sit right in the middle here. Once he gets into it, watch this. He's just going to kind of sit there and be a spy for the underneath route. Wait, he was just. Playing a little cat and mouse game with the offensive line, waiting for the underneath throw, and then just jumped up and showed some athletic ability. Let's watch this punch snap. Last one high, this one perfect. As Kyle Stringer kicks it away. Toby Christensen will let it go. That is perfect. <laughs> that, that is a 60-degree oh, wedge. That is <laughs> perfect spin. Ooh. Right there with the sprinklers were going earlier. <laughs> it's a 44-yard kick. It is the ninth time this year. Stringers pin the opponent inside the 20. Dinwiddie gets on the phone to check upstairs as Gary Proton's offense will come back on the field. We mentioned the success at the top of the show. When he took over for Lavelle Edwards, it was a great run. Gary Croton got off to a terrific start. BYU looked to be picking up right where the Edwards regime left off at 12-0. They lost their last couple that year. And Add that to what's happened the last couple. Not only have they struggled record-wise, they haven't scored as many points in the last 23 as they scored in that 12-0 start. Play pass for Barry. Watch it all. Downfield for Chris Hale. Underthrown and intercepted by Julius Brown. The senior out of Stockton, California, gets his second pick of the season. This, this, could, this would be a great clinic film of how to play the fade by Julius Brown because he's going to get in position here. He's going to watch the receiver's eyes, and as soon as the eyes of the receiver Hale go up for the football, that tells Brown to go up, find the ball, and high point it and make the interception. That was perfectly done by corner Julius Brown. Interception thrown by Barry, his eighth of the season. Did what he's thrown only one interception. All year. Oh, almost, almost like last week. <laughs> John Burbage almost made it too. It's the old no hitter in the bottom of the eighth. Three more outs to get. Oh, base hit up to <laughs> Those of you who were not with us last week in Atlanta, we did Maryland Georgia Tech, and we said, "Dang, kicker Novak, he hasn't missed inside 40. Did he miss? Now this guy, great interception." streak no in interception controlling the game managing the game as a true freshman <laughs> game. 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 <laughs> right. uh, so we just we just keep our mouths shut <laughs> <and on. laughs> we don't throw we just call it did what he throws try the same thing slides through the hands of Derek Schumann the freshman tight end marker down back in the secondary about nine yards past the line of scrimmage Defensive pass interference. We'll have Dan Hopkins' team. Pass interference. Defense. Left ball. 
That penalty was not where the ball was thrown. It happened before that. That's why it's a spot foul. It's less than 15 yards. It'll be a nine-yard flag. I was about to say what a great play by Madrietta for getting there at the last second, deflecting it away. But about five or ten yards before he had a chance to get a hand on that football, he, he held the jersey. Showman there. The thing that impresses me about Boise State, they run reverses, they throw the tight end, they throw outside, they run it inside, they fake the reverse. You have no idea how this football team's going to hit you from an offensive standpoint. David Michaels' carry will end the corner. Efo Healy and Brady, P Brady Papinga make the stop as we head off to the second. So Ryan Dinwiddie, just two completions, a big 30-yarder helped set up the second touchdown for Boise State as they've jumped out to a 12-point lead. Boy, Gary Croton's uptight, unhappy. They say when it rains, it pours, and when it snows, it's an avalanche of problems for a BYU team trying to avoid going 4-6 and, and lose a fourth at home. This car had a pump block that led to the opening touchdown, and the 30-yard pass led to a David Michael score as well. 14-2 as we head to quarter number two on College Football Thursday. Ski goggles might be needed. College Football Thursday presented by Panasonic in the snow in Provo. Our Thursday night crew, glad you're on board. Snowblower is ready. Needs need to clear off the yard lines here as the game goes on. Although the forecast is not for heavy, heavy snow. Just snow showers here as the night uh, goes on. Again, if you, it's hard to believe it was 72 degrees here yesterday. Front firing through the... Uh, Wasatch Mountains. Winter in 24 hours. It's a false start on the right tackle. And the second quarter will start with a five-yard flag on Boise State. Jason Turner will be whistled. Third is not false start. Offense. Still second down. <laughs> yes, I'm here. Where are you? <laughs> These guys need some positive things to happen because they they look a little stunned and frozen right now. I give them a lot of credit. It is a very cold night. In addition, and that first snow of the year, no matter when it happens, just chills you. Didn't win his throw. It's complete. It's Jerry Smith. We'll have a third and about eight coming up after a pickup of five for the senior from Nampa, Idaho. Our game track is brought to you by Nivea for men. Uh, Nivea make you smooth, not slick. It was slick on special teams. A couple of bad punt snaps. Boise State's led to a safety. BYU's, as you saw, led to a touchdown. The last completion makes Dinwiddie three of seven, but that 30-yarder to Tim Gilligan helped set up the only offensive touchdown, which is scored by David Michael. Boise State tries to improve to 8-1 and one and win its sixth consecutive game. Third and seven, a lot of blue shirts at the line. Dinwiddie throws incomplete. The pressure forced him to get rid of it early. Jerry Smith never looked back. It was James Allen who brought the heat. In this situation here, I would recommend they go for it. The fourth down, the field goes a lot too far. But they might as well go for it. We do have a flag. It's going to tough to see by the snow. <laughs> Leader shift. Offense. Decline. Fourth down. From here, it would be a 46-yard field goal. And Tyler Jones is a very good kicker. His long this year is 52. But uh, the problem, not in optimum condition here tonight. Well, the problem you have there is that left plant foot. And usually, sometimes, the weather like this, it'll slip. I'd go for it. There's Tyler, junior from Boise. So they will go for it and try to get it out to the 21 to keep the drive alive. Comes that same blitz from the outside. They've got to protect. They protect. They can beat this man covered. In winning. Got to get rid of it, and incomplete. 
He looked downfield for a second and then sensed the rush from behind him. Good job not giving up on the play. And Blanco Mendenhall, the defensive coordinator for BYU, sees his crew with Benaya Brown out there on that fourth down. Get Boise's offense back on the sideline. Bronco Mendenhall is mixing it up. Now, he, we asked him, how much man coverage have you been playing? He said about 78%. He said, now in this game, we're going to have to play more zone because of the threat of the deep ball from Boise State. They came with the blitz from the outside, but look, they dropped the two inside guys. They're playing a kind of a zone blitz here, which is uncharacteristic of BYU. You could tell that was almost a coverage sack because of the great coverage downfield by the Cougars. So BYU takes over, avoiding what would have been a back-breaking score. Drive starting from their 29, and very pass is complete. Out to the 36 to Toby Christensen. They almost hesitate to keep saying it's Todd's son because it's unfair to Toby, uh, who has uh, really become the, the definitive possession receiver here in his senior season. There is our friend Todd. One thing about Toby I was impressed with, he had the grades to go to Harvard, or to go to Princeton, yet he came here. That's, that's a, an intelligent young man right there, boy. And continue the uh, family tradition. Of course, Todd, one of the best here at BYU. Run inside with Whalen, the junior. Toby, the senior year, as he has been able to come here and deal with constantly hearing son of the first team all conference performer back in 1977. In the fullback position, of course, we remember top in the NFL as a tight end with the Raiders. 50 receptions led the league that year in 1977. One of BYU's best. It's still in great shape, competing in a uh, over 40 decathlon. Yeah. Wow. And I was going to say, he still looks like he could play. Yeah. What a shit. I remember his stories, Todd, uh, walking to games when he was working with us over the years. Barry's throw is intercepted by Wes Nurse. Third interception for Nurse on the season. Second one thrown in 17 plays tonight by Barry. You get to second and short. You try to run the football. Now you're at third and one. And they're going to try to throw the football out to the flat. Very, very poor decision there by Matt Barry. And Robbie Bosco is talking to him about what did you see? What did you see? And not only did he make a, a poor decision, but he floated the ball, giving Nurse plenty of time to come over and make that interception. And Boise State once again in great field position. Well, it's obvious to me between the two quarterbacks, Dinwiddie can handle the, the adverse conditions much better than Matt Barry. And it must be bad broken it's hand, huh? a broken hand. It almost looks like he talked to us yesterday. At times he feels like he's shot putting the ball because he can't get the grip. And that's in good weather let alone this weather tonight from the 49 that pass incomplete for tony mcpherson the junior who's uh, had some breakout games here over the last few averaging 22 yards per catch well already i know the weather conditions are bad we've seen a bad snap and a couple of turnovers 30 turnovers this season for byu in the bottom handful in division 1a college football you just can't turn it well, over that many times and have any prayer succeed. The thing that I think hurts the BYU offense is they don't have a game breaker on the outside and they have to rely on a possession passing game and trying to run the football to sustain long drives. And it's made it tough on them this year. David Michael, I like the way that running back hits the hole. He gets out to the 45. It'll bring up third and four, two and a half into this second quarter. Plus, Mike, we were talking with Coach uh, Troton yesterday about it. They had so many injuries. He said at one point we had four freshman offensive linemen, a freshman quarterback, a couple freshman backs. Now, they, they played a lot of young people. And they're not making excuses for them because they have to deal with these situations, but at the same time, they've had a lot of young people, and I think that, as much as anything, is dealt with, uh, is really attributed to all the turnovers. Three receivers for third and four. And the senior, Ryan Dinwiddie. Double pass out there is caught by T.J. Akery, but he's shy of the first down. Colby Buckwall brought the heat, forcing Dinwiddie to get rid of it. That's a uh, hand warmer that the players keep around their waist to keep their hands somewhat dry and warm in these conditions. Hunt team coming out. Coach uh, Mendendahl told us in our meeting yesterday that the best blitzer that he had was Brooke. 
Rockwell. Mm -hmm. And he has shown that he's got great speed to 6'2", 226. Tremendous looks at See if Kyle Stringer can pin him inside the 10 again. And a move to get that snap and dropped it and got it away. Barely. Out of bounds. This will not be a, a very far kick at all. I'll tell you what, he, he was lucky not to be called for having a knee down while he had the ball back there. It'll be BYU ball at the 31, just a 14-yard punt with the mishandled snap. When we come back, BYU has the ball, and Lee Kirk will tell us their top five heading into Survival Saturday as we get set for November 2003. We are back on College Football Thursday, presented by Panasonic. The brooms are at the ready to perhaps sweep the yard lines clear. We're looking at the goal line to our uh, right, it'd be tough to see the white line for the end zone as BYU takes over after the four punt. Matt Berry back under center. Try to run Marcus Whalen. Thus far, they've been unable to establish a run. Andy Avalos made the tackle. And that's amazing to me. You know, the offensive line for BYU averages 320 pounds. They outweigh the Boise State defensive line by 60 pounds per man, and yet they can't blow them off the line of scrimmage. These guys from Boise State are quick, and they're tough, they're and they're mean. And they're moving almost I mean, every look snap. They're, they're just they're winning the look battle at, at, the, at the line of scrimmage. I don't think they know where they're going to go, much less <laughs> the, the BYU team. Look at look at Deep, 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 deep. Second and ten. Mary stands tall. Third interception. Second one in a row for Nurse. Nurse on the run to the five. Touchdown. This is a team that was so close to defensive scores throughout the year and couldn't get one. They got one last week against San Jose State on a fumble return. And now the third interception of the night by Berry becomes the first defensive, second defensive score, first by interception on the year. Tyler Jones adds the extra point. And Boise State making a statement, 21-2. I've been really impressed with the Boise State secondary and what they've been able to do tonight. And not only coming up with the interceptions, but their anticipation. This time, Matt Berry looked. He telegraphed this interception the whole way. You're going to find, very simple, Nurse is going to sit back here and wait for Coach to come across. He's going to read the eyes of the quarterback. Watch the quarterback here when he goes back to throw. And watch number 21 the whole way. It's almost like he's baiting him, saying, no, he's open, throw it. Cut right in front. The ball is thrown behind the tight end, giving Nurse a very easy angle to step up in front of it. But he, telega he telegraphed that throw all the way, looking at Coach. And also, you could see that Matt Berry had two hands on the football like he wasn't comfortable with it because he doesn't have enough grip on it to drill it. And it's got to be that hand injury. Oh, the hand and the weather. He probably he ha doesn't, doesn't have, have a lot of feeling in his hand. And he's not putting the zip on the ball. The ball is floating every time he throws it. And I was a quarterback coach. Uh, I'd be worried about Matt Perry right now. I might want to get that John Beck ready. Because John Beck, the second quarterback, can do one thing that Perry can't do. He can run. Well, one sign. Perry has the jacket on. Beck does not. Oh. Right. So the chances are Beck, who's... You know, he's, he's, the guy's played most of the year. He's attempted 137 passes this year, so he's he's used to being out there, and I'm sure he's going to get his shot right here. Mike uh, Alba with the kick return out to the 25 yard line. Let's go check in with Dr. Jerry Punch for a second. Let me show you what Matt Berry is dealing with, guys. This is Matt Berry's right hand here. The fracture was in the fifth metacarpal on the outside of the fifth finger. That's where he has the plate and screws. He has trouble flexing this finger around the football. Now, most people will tell you the first three fingers, these three here, will help guide the football. But these three here will give it the zip. That's where he has trouble tonight, getting zip on the football, putting something oomph behind it with a wet ball and a cold finger. He's having a hard time gripping that side of the ball. We are told over here John Beck has been throwing taking some snaps. We're probably going to see John Beck, the, proof, the freshman, rather, come in for the injured Matt Berry next next period. Mike? All right, Doc. The, uh, we saw the flag drop down from the uh, score box in the corner. 
Bush in the back penalty is going to give Beck a longer field to deal with. The freshman from Mesa, Arizona, who, as Kirk mentioned, had to step in as the starter for Matt Barry, and he's thrown 137 passes thus far this year. Will be thrown into a tough situation at 21 to 2. It's also facing a defense right now that's, that's gaining a lot of confidence as this game continues. BYU, 42 yards of total offense. One first right. down. Beck scrambling, trying to make something happen. Deep downfield, incomplete. Julius Brown got all the way back to the flip. Brown and Gabe Franklin nursing car doing a very good job in coverage. Our Michigan, Michigan State, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, Washington State, USC Day on ABC. Miami against Virginia Tech. Package it all up as Survival Saturday on ABC Sports and ESPN. College game day before that at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. Well, here is the top five as the guys have... Uh, reshuffled the order here heading into this week my only difference is i took florida state out put washington state in there because washington state rallied and beat oregon state that's, that's why. oh that's why you changed it that's yeah florida saying. state did nothing didn't look good in tuesday practice tuesday <laughs> look sluggish back on the run is brought down at the nine yard line. wait a minute Lee, you on saturday night yeah. we did our top five and that's, that's exactly what exactly. my top five looked like and that's exactly what lee's top four looked like but he had florida state now that was Five nights ago, Florida right. State and Washington State haven't played. No, no, I Washington just, State. Just, no. They finished Wash, things off. Wait a minute, sweetheart. Washington State beat Oregon State. Right. But you didn't expect them to. Oh, and I know, but that was a great rally. They got behind. They ran. So rally. It has more to do with what Washington State's doing. Exactly. Less to do with. Plus, they got to fire up the nose. Fire up the nose for Notre Dame. Third and ten for John Beck against the three-man rush. A lot of DBs to look at. Got away from the would-be tackle. Now throws complete. For the first down, Mark Hansen, the freshman out of Ogden, Utah. Well, we just talked about John Beck's ability to scramble, and thank goodness he got out of the brush. Remember one thing about Beck. He's got that nice speed and action. Now, this is the situation right there. He gets good protection. It breaks down with a good coverage sack coming up, but now Kirk and Mikey gets away with athletic ability and hits the guy in the run right there. It looks like to me that he can handle in two plays much better the weather than, than Matt Berry did the entire first You can year. see the mobility there, and he did a nice job of pulling the defender towards him before he threw it downfield. Guys, my apologies. Jason Kukahiko had the catch. Here is back for Christensen, late down the middle, and nearly intercepted by Chris Carr. Andy Avalos came with the pressure. Carr back there in coverage against Christensen. Everybody back there is making plays. They are. I mean, Wes Nurse is free safety. Chris Carr is a rover making a play. Julius Brown's making plays. We just got to get Gabe Franklin, the other corner in the action, and be uh, all, all across the board. But very, very athletic Boise State secondary all over the BYU wide receivers right now. Second and ten. Very eventful last uh, series and a half here. BYU is just trying to survive at this point. And the play is blown dead. I think the official is going to reset the play clock. Now, we mentioned it during the uh, starting lineups. Right tackle up front. Now coming out, Dane Oldham from uh, Boise State. He's from the San Diego area. We talked to Dane on the phone. Obviously, the fires in Southern California has been the significant story this week in the news. He said that they're over by the coast, not in too much uh, trouble. Everybody back home was okay, but it's been tough for everybody watching the news to see what's going on back in Southern California. Pass incomplete is Mike Williams, one of Oldham's buddies up front, came with the pressure. Oldham, a uh, biology major, told us that he would like to stay in Boise, not go back to Southern California, and be a firefighter. A lot of the people go up to Boise, love it, and so many of the people from that area are uh, very involved on a regular basis with just the course of nature, fighting fires and all that beautiful open space up in Idaho during the summer months. Some of those folks are helping out with the cause in Southern California, and certainly our wishes are with all of those folks as uh, they continue their struggle to keep their property safe through this week. Third down for Beck who is chased by Corey Hall, the middle linebacker. That's a red shirt freshman 
the third leading tackler on this very aggressive defense. Well, Ron Collins, the defensive coordinator from Boise State, and his entire staff deserve a lot of credit for what we've seen so far from the defense. Because you can sit here and say, what's wrong with BYU? What's wrong with their offense? A lot of it has to do with the way B Boise State's playing. I was just sitting up here watching, watching Beck drop back to throw. There's nobody open. They have the slot players double covered. They're getting pressure on the quarterback, forcing him out. Great coverage and a great scheme so far from this Boise State defense. Matt Payne is getting that ball away quickly as he normally does. A 47-yard kick. Good kick returner Gilligan needs one block as he got over midfield and to the 47-yard line. In all phases, special teams, offense, and defense, Boise State outplaying BYU. 28-yard net punt. Be right back in Provo. ESPN's College Football Thursday, brought to you by The Document Company, Xerox, there's a new way to look at it, and by Budweiser, grab a cold, fresh Budweiser, it's game time. That's a good time for Boise State thus far, they've made the trip across the border here to Utah, leading BYU 21-2. Uh, temperature right around freezing, wind chill in the mid-20s. Snow showers started oh, at about 2 o'clock this afternoon, mountain time, and have continued here as we approach 7 o'clock in this mountain time zone. There was a push in the back penalty, so a longer field to go. First down run for Heck. And Johnny Heck takes it out to the 38-yard line. Last two years, Boise State 19 and two up there with all the big boys now, i know you're going to say they don't play in the big 10 or the big east or the sdc or the big 12. i understand that but you're playing on relatively equal footing exactly. within your league you still have to get the job done and dan hawkins the coach has seen his team do just that they put it in the hands of gilligan second run for tim this year and he got right at the line and depending on the mark he'll be close to the first down You know what I think is interesting about Boise State is I think that the nation thinks of Boise State and they think of a, an offense that's going to spread you out with four receivers right. and throw it 100 times a game. Talking to Dan Hawkins this week, he said, sure, if, if we have to spread around and throw it, we can do that. But uh, we want to be able to attack from so many different formations and we want to be physical. We want to be tough. We don't want to be a team that's just going to have a finesse passing game and we can't get it done when we have to be able to run the ball. But it's, when it is a running down, we want to be balanced. You see tonight, they're trying to be committed to the running game. They're not just here throwing the football in. On third down, they just needed a half inch, and they got a yard and a half, as Dinwiddie kept it. Well, you know, we talked to Dan Hawkins this morning. I was very impressed with his aggressive attitude. And I asked him, you know, the, the guy's already won 79% of the games he's coached in. And I tell him, of all the guys you work with, who's your mentor? And he mentioned an assistant coach named Bob Foster, who was in a coach at Cal Davis that Dan had. He said he taught me more about life than he did about football. I thought that was a tremendous compliment for a guy named Bob Foster. First down, Dinwiddie rolls right, throws across the field to the 36-yard line once again. The first down is picked up. Penalty markers down as well, so we'll see if Jerry Smith's 22-yard gain holds up. Like, there's the balance that we just talked about, how sometimes on first and ten, they will run the football, and then on other times, they'll try to take advantage if you're going to leave their receivers isolated in one-on-one -on -one coverage, and that time, that's what they did. With the accuracy of Dinwiddie, it gives them that opportunity to try to capitalize, and big play that, uh, I don't know, it looks like Boise State's walking back, so maybe they're heading back. After the play, personal foul, so they'll gain the first down, but afterwards, a uh, late push in the back away from where the play was happening so as they assess where boise state will be right around midfield let's go visit with dr jerry punch 
I was talking about Dan Hawkins' philosophy. The kids love playing for this man because he lets them cut it loose. That's his philosophy. Cut it loose. Don't be afraid to fail. So if you're afraid to fail, then you're afraid to succeed. If you make a mistake, so be it. But be aggressive. Cut it loose. Have fun. I was out there last year for the, the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl. Listen to him in meetings of players. That's the way he talks to these kids. And have some fun out there, guys. If you make a mistake, we'll get him next play. That sort of takes a lot of the pressure off a young football team. Yeah, Doc, there are a lot of quotes you can pick up on from Dan Hawkins. The one that I jotted down as we were talking to him was, don't be afraid to do something wild, but coach to win. Don't coach That's the guys to lose. Coach That's to win. Michael with the carry as he runs up the middle as the first and 10 took place from the 49. He's across midfield, and we have second and six ahead. You know, I, love I like that coach to win. It's, it's very good. But some people coach to win and still lose. Right. And this guy's got some good football players. And I'll tell you what, you could coach to win, lose, or anything else. But this Ryan Dinwiddie, this guy's a football Gives player. Gives a good chance to win. I'll it? tell you what, you could coach to lose and he'd help you win. But I, I just love his aggressive oh, nature. Yeah. You know, when it, when it comes to being a, an aggressive coach, and he coaches his coaches that way, too. Donnie Heck with the carry, and the junior will have a first down at the 40-yard line. Those of you who may just be tuning in, it is Boise State taking on BYU, and Boise State wears a lot of the titles BYU used to wear. Yes, team in the whack, high-powered offense, team that has blue in its color scheme, but a team that's always looking to earn respect on the national level. They did at the end of last season, finishing 12th in the polls. They have a senior quarterback in Ryan Dinwiddie, who's able to do so much in the passing game. They've thrown only one interception this year. He's made smart decisions in the snow to help put Boise State up 19. Another pass on Mark Anaboki. Comes up with just his fourth catch of the year. And Boise State will just be right at the first down mark over at the 31-yard line. Ryan told us in a typical week he'll try to get in on Monday on his own time and try to get in and, and study as much tape as possible. He says sometimes up to eight hours of his own time trying to look at the opponent and try to have a feel by the Monday practice or Tuesday practice what the defense wants to do. And he said by the time he gets out to the game, it's second nature. He knows exactly what they're doing. It's almost like having an offensive coordinator in the huddle, and they give him a lot of responsibilities at the line, and he checks quite a bit. Donnie Heck with the run for the first down. I asked him, what did you do this week? Short week for both teams. He said, oh, came in Sunday. Yeah. Came yeah. in Sunday. He said, a little extra film work because BYU's defense does some things that are a little bit more difficult for the quarterback. So he spent his nine or ten hours. And he, I asked him, what about classes? He says, is his class schedule adjusted? So there was one class later in the day on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Bulk of his classes on Tuesday and Thursdays, so he's able to do that extra film study and keep up with his schoolwork. Did what he's thrown at Gilligan. Tim takes it upfield. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. Great slide to the end zone. Touchdown. That's a football player there. That's a great nose for what's going on. 28-yard touchdown. This drive is a great example of what Boise State wants to do with the versatility, and depending on what the defense is going to call, they will adjust accordingly. If you're going to try to sit up, bring everybody to the line of scrimmage, leave your receivers one-on-one, -on -one, they'll get behind you. If you're going to sit back and give them a cushion, they're going to throw it underneath. That versatility just let them right down the field, mixed in a few runs, and six more points up on the board. Tyler Jones for the extra point. Knocks it through. It was six runs and three passes on the drive. And Dinwiddie was three of three for 59 yards. And he and Tim Gilligan have had a great thing going all season. It's continued here tonight. Just watch Gilligan. You see the pylon. He sees the decon. Sneaks it in there for the 28-yard score. And Ryan Dinwiddie continues his impressive season as he throws touchdown pass number 19 on the season. You know, something tells me it's colder on that BYU sideline than it is on the Boise State sideline right now. 28 to 2. Ryan Dinwiddie leading a touchdown drive. Perfect on the drive as well. BYU searching for anything to turn this around a little bit. 
James Allen can't get out to the 20 yard line. Wikidu Nani made the tackle. <laughs> Well, the last play we talked about how they took advantage of the corners. Look at all three defensive backs, 10 yards off the line. It's going to allow Gilligan to get up and just make a simple cut to the outside. And there's nobody out there that can slow him down and take him away from making the play. By the time the defense reacts to try to come up and make a tackle, he shakes Francisco and runs right down the field. If you're going to sit back, they're going to throw underneath you. If you're going to come up, they have the ability and quickness to go right around you with an accurate quarterback. John Beck, the freshman, is back in. If you weren't with us a couple of drives ago, Matt Berry, three interceptions. He was pulled, really struggling with that uh, broken hand injury that he suffered back in mid-September against New Mexico. And uh, especially with the cold conditions and a wet ball tonight, just didn't have it. So they've gone back to Beck, who handed off to Thomas Stancil on the first down carry for two yards. And of all the discouraging things that's happened to BYU, the most is discouraging to me is they've lost three straight games at home. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to yes. lose, three dogs, don't lose at home. Try to lose someplace else, because you see the crowd, they expect them to lose right now. That's not a good sign. Exchange in and throws. Chris Hale could not hang on. Big hit delivered by Corey Hall. Hale slow to get up. His father is Val Hale, the athletic director here at BYU. Like that is a play that BYU has run here for years and years, getting the ball underneath. Problem is it's designed against man coverage, and that time they tried to run it, and Corey Hall is just sitting there, and poor Hale came across the middle. <laughs> He's lucky he was able to get up after that. BYU's run 29 plays. They only have two first downs here tonight. Third and seven. Four-man rush for Boise. And the throw of a great pitch at the 36-yard line by Toby Christensen. Chris Carr almost had another interception. Toby Christensen, that was a sensational catch. Catch, he's only six foot tall, but boy, he goes right up there now. Watch Toby as he jumps and catches the football at his height. Christensen served his mission in Barcelona, Spain. And I tell you what, the more I see that kid, the more competitive he is. They say if your best clutch receiver on the football team is Toby Christensen, and you can see why. Climb the ladder there to make the oh. catch. He's these Boise State defensive backs do not respect the deep ball. They are jumping on everything to 10 to 15 yards. Beck scrambles into his own lineman and loses three yards. You would think most times when cornerbacks are jumping rounds, you got a chance for a pump and then the deep ball. The problem is no the quarterback has time to you know, throw a deep ball. It's a great combination when you're getting pressure and you don't respect the deep ball. You know, That's those true. defensive backs, are, they're back there licking their chops, and you're up by 26 points. That's when it's a great combination. Yeah. It's a different animal. Well, it's been that way even when it was a close game early. I mean, the difference in these two football teams is the team speed of Boise State. They're much quicker than BYU in every position. Every aspect. Good call, Second down throw. Christensen stops on the dime. It's out to the 43. Why is it always a dime that you stop on? Why don't you stop on a quarter? Why? Yeah. Because a dime is such a small spot. A quarter is such a big spot. That's why they say. But, I mean, your feet, you know, it's hard to stop on a dime. Who came up with that saying? Is that around your day, Coach? Yeah, that was are we standing? Are we sitting? What are we doing? I'm following the direction, sir. Yeah. Yeah. The coach looks nice tonight. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Get on tonight. Nice. Good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Tough guy over here. Unprepared guy over here. <laughs> Uh, so it's nicer when we get to call you out on that. Third and a couple for Beck. He kept the play alive, took a huge shot. It was completed to the 30-yard line for a first down. Jason Kukahiko comes up with the grab. 26 yards, play made by Beck, oh. who is really feeling it right now. Oh, oh, that's a sports center highlight right there. Oh. Beck escapes everybody. 6 2 one, 90, got yeah. nice athletic feel. But Kirk and Mike, I don't know if you guys saw this, but this is like... What's the term? Real speed? Oh. Uh, BYU oh. 
you oh flag for the personal foul. This is down by where the play happened. Beck's going to have to come to the sidelines. And they're going to check on him as he took oh. a lick. Mm. Mm. This is, yeah, let's check this one out. Deep Ryan, number 12. Now he's going to scramble. Nice job, except right here. Coming nice up. Coming. 20 right seconds. here. Ooh. Corey Hall, the red shirt freshman. The whiplash of that. That's the part that we don't pay attention to enough when quarterbacks take hits like that. And then, you know, you could almost call that head to head uh, uh, penalty, 15 yard penalty there. I'm. I'd like to see that one more time because I tell you what, that was a vicious hit to the face. It should have been a 15-yard penalty. BYU does not have a quarterback out there right now. The play did pick up a first down. And they're gonna have to take a timeout. They are checking on Beck. Barry still has the jacket on. Todd Mortensen is the third-string quarterback. They take a timeout to figure out who's gonna come in. And we'll come back. They continue to look at John Beck over on the BYU sideline. Dr. Jerry Punch over there Let's checking tell out. Tell us straight, Beck. Dr. Jerry Punch. Doc is right, right there. Right, right there. Guys are working on his right index finger, and uh, there was just a lot of. Uh, they always had, had a laceration where a tear on the back of the finger, and a Dr. Kurt Kimball, that's Kimball holding the right hand up. He's their team orthopedic Ooh. surgeon, so they're going to move him very slowly to the locker room. Obviously, Beck in uh, a lot of pain, very, very uncomfortable. Ooh. They covered it up with a towel, but. Uh, it looks like an open laceration on the back of the first knuckle of the index finger on his right hand, guys. All right, Doc. Always hustling over there. The best. The best. Dr. Jerry Punch checking out the injury to John Beck, who took uh, just a wicked shot. So Matt Berry comes back in the game. Remember, Berry intercepted three times. Only one that went back for a touchdown. He will throw on first down. And a throw complete. Another first down picked up. Daniel Coates, the freshman tight end, who's caught 28 balls on the season. That Daniel Coates, uh, you know, we I'm on the John Mackey Award for the best tight end in America. He's the only Committee. freshman. He's the only freshman listed in the whole United States as a tight end. He's got 28 catches more than any other freshman tight end in the nation. He must be a pretty good football player. From Leighton, well, he's got the size and athletic ability to go along with it for a young player. He's a future star, that kid, yep. Daniel Coates. Six foot three, 250 pounds. The run to Marcus Whalen, unable to get back to the line. So we're going to have third and a couple of yards coming up in the warm, comfortable, toasty studio. Let's see what Chris Fowler is cooking up for halftime. Hey, bud. A little chilly in here, but I'm not going to complain, guys, when the Pontiac high performance happened before. we got five questions on the five biggest games. Do the Cowboys have the formula to beat the Sooners again? And so many big games. How about Michigan State and Michigan, Mark? We talked about Michigan's great pressure against Purdue. What can Michigan do, Michigan State do, to beat that pressure? And I'll tell you why the Florida Gators will upset the Georgia Bulldogs. All right. Well, predictions and opinions they had at halftime, guys. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris, we look forward to seeing you at halftime. Third and a couple. The throw underneath is incomplete. It was intended again for that tight end. Lee was talking about Coates. But Matt Barry unable to get it to him. Nice coverage by Andy Avalos. Fourth and two from their 37, down 26. Gotta BYU go. go. Rightly? What's that? Gotta, gotta, gotta go. go. Oh, First guess. Oh, gotta go. 28 to 2. Nice call, you guys. <laughs> I want to see it when it's uh, four to two or something like that. This is a good call, obviously. You've taught us well, Lee. You know, you've prepared us for should you go or should you not go? I would definitely try to get the ball in the hands of number 20, Daniel Coates, somehow. Even if it's across the middle and a little quick pass. Coates is on the right side. Christensen left. Gary runs. He has the first down and protects it as he gets over the 33-yard line. We have one quarterback who was walking up the stairs there to get an x-ray on his hand. In the meantime, Barry, who's uh, just a couple of weeks back from a break in his hand that was so bad, the coach, you know, the doctors, I should say, told him it's a miracle that he came back that quickly and was able to play. But he picks up the first down there, and the fourth down conversion keeps the drive alive. From the 34, wants it all. Shot downfield. Receiver fell down. Marker comes down. 
fans who have been very frustrated with the officiating, not West officiating, uh, official officiating crew, throws the flag here. Remember, BYU got, com or Boise State got completely snowed on a call earlier. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> it all balances out. You know, this reminds me of the final drive against UNLV. You know, at that time, Matt Berry hit 7 for 7. 7 for 7 in that drive for with the hurry-up offense. Maybe, just maybe, if you get a couple of quick passes and a touchdown, you never know in that second half. That's right. Get something on the board. Yeah, get something on the board. So BYU enters the red zone now at the Boise State 19. Snow that was falling a little more heavily earlier on is not affecting play as much as it did in the first quarter. A throwback is complete to Rod Wilkerson. Junior out of Orem, Utah, gets his 18th grab of the year. Minute 25 left. BYU has only one timeout remaining. And this is a, a stay-in-the-game drive here, Lee. As and, the reason, pointed out. and the reason it's not very, very, it doesn't have to be quick, is they've got plenty of time because they call the ball plays from the sideline. Right. They're not huddling. And they've done this, and they did this beautifully against UNLV. Robbie ba Bosco there is frustrated. Every time you talk about how good it works, it doesn't work. You know, that's true. Maybe I'm jinxing them again. But at least, they, at least they're moving down the right direction. Yeah. I think Before the they were going the other way with the other guy catching and going that way. That wasn't good. And the reason they're doing that is because the play clock was not reset properly and some time ran down that should not have. So BYU owed that time. The quarterback's mobility, both with Beck and, and now with Barry, have kept this drive alive in many cases. And that's maybe slowed down some of the Boise State pressure. Barry's uh, much bigger at six foot six. Barry rolls and throws. Christensen catches it. Toby only able to gain a couple of yards, but still third and short with a buck seven left on the clock. Christensen told me something interesting, guys, uh, yesterday as we visited. He said you know, the win over UNLV, the 27-20 overtime win that they had on Saturday in Vegas, so that was, it was a relief to win. And I stopped to say, you know, that's not what college football victories are supposed to be about. And Toby said, or Toby's like his dad, very intelligent, very thoughtful speaker. He said, that's the way things have become here. It has become a relief to get a victory. Wilkerson catches it, unable to get basically back to the line of scrimmage. So we'll have fourth down coming up. And Julius Brown made a big hit. The last two times that BYU has tried to throw some kind of screen, the Boise State secondary, it's like they're in the huddle, or it's like they're reading Rodney, yeah. Rodney Busco's signs because they're jumping it. They're almost there before the receivers make the catch. Well, fourth down and three from the Boise State 12. See if BYU goes for it when we come back. Back here in Provo, Utah, Boise State leading 28 to two. They brought a couple of thousand fans who are being very vocal as BYU is trying to pick up a fourth down conversion for the second time in this drive. Down in the end where those uh, couple of thousand orange clad Boise State fans are making noise. I definitely try to get the ball to number 20 Daniel Coates somehow. Just a little hook pass, a little splat pass. Oh, he and Tony Christensen at the top of the screen together. Number 20, throw the ball number 20. Fourth and three, Barry stays in. It's deflected and incomplete. First car coming in. Carr and West Nurse have been everywhere tonight, whether it's the back line or in the face of the quarterback, and a 14-play drive comes to an end. They tried to cross their tight ends, Coates and Jory, but the pressure was just too tremendous on Barry. He wasn't able to sit in there and give it enough time to develop. There's a little rub route underneath with both the crossing tight ends. Whalen, Marcus Whalen, number 30, did the Olay block. He got up there and went like... 
let the guy right past him. Gee, that was a lousy block. That's how you, no wonder you can't complete a pass if you, you know, can't block. Yeah. 46 seconds left, and we'll see Dan Hawkins here takes a knee. It was interesting, uh, earlier this season, when Boise State had a 27-20 game against Tulsa, Hawkins was criticized. Uh, the offense was struggling. Dinwiddie had a headache. He really uh, probably had a slight concussion. But Hawkins was criticized, and he came up with this statement. Take a knee. And people were criticizing me for taking the knee when I scored a late touchdown. Gandhi wouldn't have taken the knee. Thomas Edison wouldn't have taken the knee. <laughs> he said it got a little bit, it got played out and got some national publicity. But he's a deep thinker, a philosopher. And, well, Gandhi and Hawkins both yeah, can't what? change their mind. How did Thomas Edison get in there with Gandhi? I, I don't know. Oh, okay. He's, no. he's just reaching. <laughs> Boise State crew takes a knee and takes it into the locker room with an impressive first half showing. Barry heads back. Beck is off to the hospital to get his finger worked on. Boise State leading BYU by 26. Thursday nights haven't been good to BYU at home this year. Now, the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report. And here's Chris Fowler. Fun of the second half back in Provo to Mike, Kirk, Lee, and Doc Coogs in a deep, deep hole. Mr. Trico. Thank you, Mr. Fowler and company. College Football Thursday presented by Panasonic. 28-2, BYU on top. What would be perhaps the biggest win in the history of Boise State football if it holds up here in the second half? Here's the Nivea for Men game track. BYU's Matt Berry through three interceptions. John Beck had to leave with an injury on this shot that he took from Corey Hall on a drive in the second quarter. That was 14 plays and no points. Brian Dinwiddie, although not spectacular, steady. 7 of 15, 100 yards, and this touchdown to Tim Gilligan on this night when the wind chills in the 20s, and Boise State's in the 20s as well. 28 to 2. Uh, I guess there's a lot of questions from people about Boise State. Great record, but they've only beaten teams with a, you know, a record of about 34% win percentage. Are you guys impressed with what you saw in the first half? Very impressed with their overall team speed, their ability to move to the ball offensively and defensively. I think they're a better football team than Bowling Green that I saw Saturday. Really? Oh, yeah. I think they could beat Bowling Green because I think they're quicker you think than so? Bowling Green. I, I think that's, you know, that's being excited seeing them tonight. Bowling Green team that I saw last Saturday could play with a lot of teams. That'd be a great matchup, actually, yeah. in a bowl game. But anyway, uh, what, what they have is just great athletic ability. They have a great advantage on both sides of the ball. They have an experienced quarterback that can spread the ball around. They can hurt you in a lot of different ways. And right now, 28 to 2. I think if you're BYU, you have to be pretty happy that it's only 28 to 2 and the conditions are wet and cold because it might be a lot worse than that. And it could still be a lot worse than that by the end of this game. Well, Tyler Jones' pickup was going out of bounds. Uh, Micah Alba caught it and went out of bounds. So instead of the ball being at the other 35, it's at the three. Oh. Not the way you want to start the second half. You know. BYU's defense, guys, didn't do a bad job against Boise State's offense. 38 plays, 161 yards. I know BYU couldn't get anything going offensively, three turnovers. But when you look at 28-2, to two, remember, one of those scores comes on a pick six, and the first one comes on a blocked punt. So the BYU defense has done okay here tonight. And again, I think that the weather has helped them in this case because it's, I think it's affected Boise State, and it's affected BYU, both sides of the ball, with this uh, this difficult set of circumstances and Todd Mortensen the third quarterback comes in the game junior out of Tempe Arizona and he'll throw and just air it out take some chances his pass incomplete intended for Chris Hale down the field so Todd Mortensen the junior gets uh, thrown into it here 9 of 22 in just very brief action here in this 2003 season Barry with the three interceptions from the broken hand he couldn't grip the ball properly or as well as he'd like to and control it. John Beck taken for a look at his injured fingers. So anytime you play three quarterbacks in one game, chances are you're not winning that game. Fui Vakapuna, the freshman out of Utah, is the running back. And Vakapuna delivers the blow to about the eight-yard line. And we'll have a third down coming up. Let's go visit with Jerry Punch. 
Guys, at halftime, Gary Croden, you, you know what he had to say. He had trouble. We all saw in the first half, Matt Berry having trouble gripping the football. So I got a quarterback with an injured hand who can't grip the football because it's cold and because it's wet. He said, then Beck, I need John Beck because he's, his scrambling ability allows us to buy time to find a receiver. He's off being x-rayed. We have not gotten results back on his x-rays. But now they're to a third quarterback trying to get some mobility and get some time to catch up and throw the football. But it doesn't look real good right now for a lot of experience at the QB position for... Uh, for BYU. Mike. All right, Doc. Mortensen to throw here on third down. Christensen was the intended receiver. As uh, Mortensen has thrown 31 passes in 10 games in two years before this season. He comes in here in a tough spot, backed up to his own three, and they're three and out. It's tough for Mortensen, but, Mike, I think it, it would be tough. John Beck brought an element in because of his athletic ability and allowed him to get away from the pressure. But, again, this is a possession passing game without a game breaker in the backfield without a game breaker at receiver it's tough to sustain long drives when you have that dilemma and remember this was caused by a stupid mistake by the kickoff return man not letting the ball go out of bounds yeah. cost him 32 yards they get the snap off snap was good there and matt Payne does not get a great kickoff it goes out of bounds at the 47 yard line well tomorrow night the nba on espn kicks into our regular season fridays after the key is shoot around at 7 30 eastern kevin garnett and the timberwolves visiting jason kidd alonzo morning in the nets and then at 10 30 eastern Allen iverson and the sixers open with a home win tuesday against philly the early west coast trip out to sacramento the nba on espn iverson going for 26 in the big fourth quarter on opening night in philly against a Miami team that will struggle this year, but we'll see AI against Mike Bibby tomorrow night in the second game of our doubleheader. Dinwiddie first down pass is complete. Out to the 40-yard line to Jerry Smith. The senior Dinwiddie, 62% completions this year, thrown for over 300 yards per game. He's had two games this year where he's thrown for over 500 yards in the process of rewriting the Boise State record book. 295 passing attempts this year, one interception. Not bad. A toss to David Michael. Inside the red zone, down to the 19-yard line, first down, and a pickup 22. So the senior out of Sacramento, speaking of uh, Sacramento Kings, the Kings fan is David Michael. He's taken it over 800 rushing yards with his action here tonight. We ought to give some love to Chris Peterson, the offensive coordinator, six years an offensive coordinator at Oregon. He, he has 90 passes and 25 run concepts, concepts in their offensive game plan. They only use about 40% of it. This guy, Chris Peterson, knows what he's doing because he's got BYU completely disorganized. They have no idea where the ball's going. Michael Ruck. <laughs> Stop. I told By you. By Toby Buckwald. <laughs> it's unbelievable. We got this thing going. Every oh. half we do. <laughs> Well, but Lee, you're right. He does such a nice job with, with multiple personnel groupings. I mean, they come out and it seems like they're in a different formation. They have shifts, they have motions. It's trying to, and they're trying to keep the BYU defense back on their heels. Then you mix it in the balance with the play calling. It's really a nice offensive package they have. Let's just point out we can't see Peterson up here in the press box because of the snow. It's virtually impossible to see into the coach's box. After the loss of five, it is second and 15. Jerry Smith, the receiver in short motion. Five in the pattern for Dinwiddie. Late intercepted. Well, a second interception of the year. Aaron Francisco trying to make something happen. They're saying, throw it back to me. And Francisco kept it and got out to the 45-yard line. Gennaro Guilford was begging Francisco to pitch it back. But enough bad things have happened to BYU. Good return and the second interception thrown by Dinwiddie this year. Uh, he's going to go back and look at the tape here and be very upset with himself because he had he had an open man and the flat and the flat was Jerry Smith. Smith is going to just go right to the flat, very simple, and look at the coverage. Sag back. He had three defenders on. Gilligan and nobody up front on Jerry Smith. I don't think he saw Aaron Francisco. I think he snuck around a chicken yep. coop and did a good a jump on the ball and made that good interception. 
So first down from the 45. And Morton tosses the Fui via Vahapapana, who has a nice run for 18 yards as he pushes Wes Nurse down the sideline. Nice block by Rob Wilkerson, the wide receiver. As Vakapuna takes it out deep into Boise territory. Vakapuna now, five carries for 33 yards. From the 36, they feed him again. And the 229-pound freshman gains about three yards. Let's see if Jerry Punch has an update on the freshman quarterback who was injured earlier. Unfortunately, Michael, it's not a very good report. John Beck has a non-displaced fracture of the index finger on his throwing hand right behind the knuckle where they were working on where they had a laceration. The X-ray showed the non-displaced fracture. That's the good part. It will not require surgery. They'll put it in the cast. He'll be out four to six weeks, and obviously he's done for the night. So tough break for the freshman QB. Jerry, that's the season for BYU. They are off next week, then play Notre Dame and Utah to close this 2003 season. So Todd Mortensen stepping in. Pass to Toby Christensen. Gets it out to the 32. It's only a gain of a yard. Brad Allen, the dime back, made the tackle. Brad Allen, 5'7", 180 pounds. And he probably went through... I don't know, close to a thousand pounds of offensive linemen to, to squirm through to make that play. They had three offensive linemen sitting out there ready to block. It was a convoy, but I guess they couldn't account for Brad Allen. And like I said, 5'7, 180. He just wiggled his way through there and made a great play. It's the kind of player Dan Hawkins likes. Yep. Full heart. Yep. Doesn't care what size. Third and six. They show a lot of window dressing. Holds it up top for Chris Hand. Incomplete. No blockers. Fourth down. Gabe Franklin there on the cover. We talked with Ron Collins, Lee, about the, the athletic ability of his secondary. Brad Allen is the guy that he loves so much because the play before, he was out in the flat making a play in the coverage. This time, they try to bring him on the blitz, trying to get any kind of pressure they can. I'll tell you, very versatile defender at 5'7", 180 pounds. They, kind of a dime back, but he's in there quite a bit. And they love to send him, even though he is a small in stature. Need to get to the 26 to keep the drive alive. Todd Mortensen, the junior quarterback. Four options to throw to. But incomplete. Obviously, with Barry a sophomore, and then John Beck, a true freshman who came in for the injured Barry, wasn't a lot of opportunities for Mortensen to get a lot of reps in practice. And, and the lack of familiarity with this changed offense certainly showing here. Boise ball when we come back. Oh. Back in Provo, where Boise State leads BYU 28-2. Boise beat, BYU, uh, beat Iowa State in the Crucial.com Humanitarian Bowl last year. Weather was okay there two years ago when Louisiana Tech played Clemson. They had snow for that game up in Boise. And there made snow games. This team's been involved with since. Dinwiddie deep ball is incomplete as Ryan was trying to get it to Jerry Smith. Well, uh, Lee, what uh, Home Depot coaching adjustments would you uh, endeavor on each side? Well, the first one's obvious. Same old, same old for... Boise State, they're doing a great job. And to me, and BYU's got to take some chances on defense. They've got to blitz a little bit more, play man coverage. What's the difference if you're going to get beat 28-2 to 2 or 48-6? to 6? Doesn't make any difference. Go after them, Bronco. Go after them. you got no choice. You can't score offensively. Just do the same thing you tried to do a little while ago. Intercept the ball. Not going to get much there. His defense is played, as I said. Okay. I was going to say, I think... Bronco Mendenhall, the defensive coordinator for BYU, he's, he's pretty much pulled out all the stops. Love his attitude. Yeah, I like this guy. Love yeah. his attitude. We always talk about, it seems like we always endorse coaches on Thursday night. <laughs> Sign me up for Bronco Mendenhall as a great future in this profession. He is an outstanding attitude, and he wants, he wants players who are that blue-collar work ethic kind of guys who are tough. And that's what he's going to be recruiting here in the future. His mentor, Joe Lee Dunn, the old legend of the South. 
third and ten for Ryan Dinwiddie. Throws deflected and almost intercepted. Went off the hands of Francisco. James Allen back there in coverage as well. Mendenhall's team has done a good job. He has to keep reminding those guys as they head out. Hey, you haven't given up the 28. You've given up 14. I know what the scoreboard says, but... Wayne, all right, these guys are playing well. Remember, he called Fra Francisco a warrior. He said he's the best football player I got on my team. He's an NFL guy in the future. And he said that that Cougar position is kind of the area where he builds the defense around. So he needs a great player, and Aaron Francisco, as a junior, has stepped up this year for him. A high snap over the head of Stringer. In trouble. He scoops it. Tackled in the end zone. A second safety. I don't think I've ever seen 28 to 4 in a football game. I don't think I've ever seen the number four up on the board. Ever. 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 It's three of the game. It's like those uh, you know, old Big Ten turn of the century, you know, six four. That's what Ray was getting yeah. after. Look at that. Yeah. So a second safety. <laughs> this one coming again on the punt snap, and Kyle Stringer has had a very stressful night. Again, he's 5'8". Uh, Earlier, Kevin Lausma had a high snap. A, a nice job. Take it and take the two points instead of trying to fool around with it. Right, Coach? The only difference that I taught him, once that turned around, you had turned your back, you take it and you scoop it and throw it out of the end zone. Yep. Because you could fumble that, they could recover and get a touchdown. Now, I know this game's out of hand, 28-4. to 4, okay. But if they could just... I'm telling you, if they could just get any kind of a return up here and get one on the scoreboard, I mean, then you put the pressure on Boise State. The snapper allows me, just seems like he's overcompensating yeah, right. for the weather. Yep, he is. And yeah, remember, Jer Jerry Punch told us earlier that second. it's his second team snapper because yeah. the uh, top punch snapper was out because of an injury. Christensen dropped it, picked it up, and on the return of the free kick, he takes it out to the 40. Terrell Hall in on the tackle there. Well, this is uh, week two of the Bowl Championship Series standings, brought to you by Allstate. The guy showed you in the poll at halftime a little bit about what goes into it, the poll average, the computer average, the schedule rank, and the two big ones. When you lose, it's a significant minus, and quality wins, uh, for example, Miami's win over Florida State and LSU against Georgia. Quality wins helping their standings. And because the top two is where you need to get to, we do everything in a games behind format like baseball standings after number two, meaning Florida State needs to move up. But if Miami loses, the head-to-head -head Florida State-Miami win may affect that a little bit. Try a little trick eraser here with Chris Ham. Will speed on the edge a dozen first down yards across midfield and into Boise State territory. Anything you got, sweetheart, reverses, bootlegs, anything else to get back in this game. But going back to the PCS thing, I still don't understand my whole life, if LSU beat Georgia, how come they're behind them in the polls? Because they lost later to the uh, to the Florida Gators. Okay. That's but I mean, if they beat that team, it's like a heavyweight championship. If you knock a guy out, you should be better than him. I know that's a crazy thing. Wait, 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 wait. That's why You're the the, wait a there, second. Because two years ago, when the, all right, we're going to get into this. Let thing. me do first and ten for the 48 here with Todd Mortensen. Looking long. Man breaks free, but ooh, Mortensen can't get the timing of the deep routes. It's incomplete intended for Rod Wilkerson. Well, you were saying? I'm just going to say that two years ago we got into this discussion, right? When it happened to be a certain team in Tallahassee that <laughs> lost to the Miami Hurricanes. Remember in 2000? Yeah, that's right. And Florida State lost to Miami and then later in the year ended up moving ahead of Miami. Miami went to the Sugar Bowl. Not right. And Miami went to the National Shouldn't Sugar Bowl. Shouldn't have happened. Remember that? You remember that? Shouldn't have uh, happened? Then why are you saying it should happen this year? Remember I the said it should have happened then. I've just asked the question. If a football team beats another one, shouldn't they be better than them? Well, yeah, but from the 48, Morton's throw is oh, in it. Oh, intercepted. Oh, oh. And it's the only time you are ever disappointed when you come up with an interception. Gabe Franklin had more grass to run in front of than any player ever. And he slid down. And that was the guy, Herb. 
Hershey was asking for doing something right. Remember, he was the only guy you had been. Yeah, now he, he uh, we've, we've completed the, the quartet in the back. All the guys in the secondary are making plays tonight. Four interceptions. The BCS conversation will continue, so come back. <laughs> ESPN's College Football Thursday. Brought to you by the Principal Financial Group. We understand what you're working for. And by the next Ford F-150. Built Ford Tough. Four interceptions for Boise State on the night. The latest by Gabe Franklin. Four points for BYU on the night. Bob said Uecker. one was the loneliest number. There's Bob Euchre. <laughs> That's right, the Euchre seats. BYU has never had a game end with four points scored by BYU, by the way. I know you were has really worried about that. I can't, I can't four. really get on that for you right now. But I, I, get that I can do here. Michael with the carry on first down. Boise State leading 28-4 to four for Dan Hawkins, who almost was the Oregon State coach this year. Remember when Oregon State's opening came up? It was Dennis Erickson went to the NFL in San Francisco after Steve Mariucci went to the Detroit Lions. Oregon State was looking. Eventually hired Mike Riley. But Dan Hawkins was right there in the final couple of options for that job. Michael Carroll to get out to the 45-yard line. He has great ties in that Oregon area, and he really has a, a flair for knowing what he needs to do to energize the program. He is the face of Boise State football. It's a cardboard cutout of uh, Hawkins that's around. You can get your picture. That started with Joe Paterno at Penn State, the cardboard cutout, and now everybody kind of does it and has a little fun with it. There's one of Dan Hawkins, one of the many marketable ways that he's trying to be the face of this Boise State program. Third and five is quarterback Dinwiddie, incomplete. Intended for Gilligan. Dinwiddie was hit by Colby Buckwalt. So once again, this uh, potent Boise State offense, three and out off the field. Now let's watch the punt snap now. Kyle Stringer has seen a couple fly over his head. And still, Evan lost to snap it. Got back there slowly, but it got back there. And time to kick it. Christensen took it on the bounce and takes it down to the 15-yard line. Well, we mentioned Hawkins with some of those things here. Here's some of the TV commercials that are airing in the Boise area. You'll get his personality here. Treat your team to a heat and glow barbecue from A1 Fireplace and Backyard World. Okay, team, I really need your best stuff out there today. You got to get out there and swing outside, swim, and slide through. Coach, can't we just play on the swings? Things are looking pretty tense, Coach. What's your strategy? Well, a dip in a beachcomber hot tub always takes the edge off. Ah, beachcomber hot tubs. <laughs> we. Sometimes you got to do those kind of Let things. Let me tell you something. You do anything for money, you guys. Including us. First down run. And a nice run by Vakapuna. He gains 13 out near the 28-yard line. <laughs> but, uh, Lee, there are also things you need to do for your program to get them well, on that, the map. And no, no, that, you don't do that stuff to help your program. Oh, well, how about some of the things you did? You're the, oh, that was different. Like your coaches show. No, that, well, the coaches show, that was different. But Didn't you come you, out of a coffin in yeah, your coaches show? Yeah, that's said, we're not dead yet. We're not right? dead yet. I rode an elephant in the Ringley Brothers Barney Bur Bur Bailey Parade. Say nothing. Say nothing. No. See, there's, there's a season ticket. Stuff. We sold four season tickets. I did a harness race. <laughs> did you ever race the harness? No, oh, no. Is it the sulky? Yeah. Yo. Todd Mortensen, deep ball down the middle is incomplete. But taking these deep shots, for the, no chance of timing, because uh, Mortensen doesn't do this very yeah, often. Frank, tell me this. All right, here's the, the harness race, and that's scores 28-4. Okay, so, you get on a harness race, I mean, you go this way around the hair, the thing goes really slow. Yes. But their train, once you turn it around, pew, it Take flies. And I went, I almost fell off, and he was flipping himself, and slab was coming over. I came in last. Even last four man race, four horse? five guys, race. five horse race. Uh, this was at Indiana or Louisville. I was at Louisville. At Louisville. Did it push ticket ticket sales up? No. <laughs> Second and ten. Mortensen. Half complete for a first down. Here they come. 
to <laughs> check that in Slater in the game here for the first time. So looking for anybody who can contribute, Ryan Slater comes in for a rare grab. You know what the best thing that helps you, you know, in selling tickets and all that stuff? I've told you a hundred times. Win. Yes. Win. Thank you very much. Yes, Just win. You don't have to do commercials, but if you win, they which, keep coming. And that's why they come in there. Which, which he's done. <laughs> Hello. Guys won 79% of his game. 67, 17 and 1 as a head football coach. Woo! Question is, how much longer will he be at Boise? That pass catch by Ryan Slater, by the way, was the first in his career. Another deep shot down the field. Uh, Wilkerson, that is not working. So that's the reality of turning a, not turning a program around, but winning at a program at the level of Boise State. If you have a lot of success like that, chances are somebody's going to start knocking on your door, whether it's Big Ten, Pac-10, Big 12, somebody will give him an opportunity. Well, it happened here with Dirk Cutter, who's the coach at Boise State and then was hired at Arizona State. We saw him last year mm -hmm. uh, at the uh, Pacific Life Holiday Bowl, and it's hard to not come away from any time around Dirk Cutter and impressed. be incredibly impressed. Very good man. Organized. Very organized. Great coach. The 43, Mortensen toss is incomplete. It was intended for Toby Christensen. Oh, at ESPN.com every Thursday night, you can ask us some questions. Our Thursday night mailbag, Chris, who gave his last name too, is <laughs> a brave guy from Phoenix. Interested in our thoughts, who's going to get the Arizona job? John Makovic let go earlier this year. A lot of speculation about that job and the Mississippi State job. Anybody out there? Uh, there's a lot of candidates. I think Arizona right now is in the process of narrowing the choices down. I think they had a lot of candidates, and now they're narrowing it down to try to get a feel. A lot of names out there. Give it another week or two until it starts to... Maybe we can go to that question in a couple weeks. Wilkinson throws complete at the 35. For the first down, so it's the second career grab for Ryan Slater. Maybe Jerry Punch can add to the mailbag question. Guys, rumor is that there's a couple of guys that names at the very top of the Arizona list, and one of them is a current Big East coach who would like to move, and that guy right there, Dan Hawkins, is also, I'm told, uh, at or near the top of their list, and he has not contacted them. He has been contacted through a couple of different sources and asked if he'd be interested. He said, I don't want to talk about it during the year. I love where I am. I love being a part of uh, Boise State, where I live, and the lifestyle, but he would listen to them at the end of the year. So uh, Dan Hawkins is a possible candidate at or near the top of the list, along with maybe one other guy back east. Uh, currently in the Big East. 35, couple yard run there for Vacapuna. So you go through, Rich Rodriguez is in good shape at West Virginia. Paul Pasqualoni just trying to keep things going at Syracuse. Obviously, with the three schools that have moved on, Rutgers, your Temple, uh, their coaches, Coach Wallace, Coach Shiano still has things going there. And they have Pittsburgh and Walt Harris who has ties out to that area. The list of Big East coaches. We mentioned... Uh, Dirk Cutter coming from Boise State to a BCS school. Houston Nutt was the coach at Boise State for a year before he went to Arkansas. Todd Mortensen scrambles and gets out of bounds. Now, Lee, Boise State is in the conversation to possibly go into the Mountain West. Uh, a lot of conference shuffling going on. If Boise State goes to the Mountain West, do they have a better chance of keeping a Dan Hawkins around a little bit longer? It has nothing to do with it. They've got to pay him more money. They just got to put better facilities and give them a lot more money. But if you get into a league that has a better TV deal, a little bit more of an opportunity to make money, then you have a, more of a chance of doing it. The best thing a guy like Dan Hawkins can do with these other jobs you're hot. is use it as leverage. Let everybody know they're interested in you and then get what you want from where you are. Third and seven from the 33. Mortensen's throw is incomplete. He was uh, <laughs> trying to get it down the middle, but Wes Nurse... And Daniel Coates covered and a flag is now thrown just as we said it and it looks like it was uh, the war of words going on after the battle on the offensive line. It's always more a hot tub commercials if you need more money. <laughs> I promise you they don't pay a lot of money in Boise, Idaho for hot tub commercials. Believe me. It's a beautiful place. Hot play. Gorgeous. Personal foul. Defense. 15 yards. First down. 
Well, the reason Boise State wants to go into the Mountain West is a natural. They got Wyoming, Colorado State, and Air Force as natural rivalries. It's driving distance to Salt Lake City and Provo, so it's a natural for Boise State, State to come into the Mountain West if and when they expand. Not to mention, it's an opportunity to compete at a higher level and sure. get more exposure and let people know what kind of football you're playing in Boise. Without getting into the machinations, Rice, SMU, and Tulsa are going to leave the WAC for Conference USA. They have already extended invitations to New Mexico State and Utah State in the Sun Belt of Big West to come into the WAC. The question becomes, does Boise stay? Do they add more to the WAC? Or does Boise get an invite to a Mountain West Conference with a lot of change at the President's level? Point to throw is wide open, but he didn't have the time to sit in and throw it to Justin Jury. Chris Carr was coming on the pressure. That looks like, why didn't he get it to him? This third-string quarterback who's about yeah. to get lit up. Yeah, and, and I think Mortensen was a little bit frustrated because he wanted Jordy to release a little bit quicker. But one thing I've seen with Mortensen, he's, he's, and this is, this is the trouble being the third-string receiver. You don't get a lot of reps with the first unit, so your, your timing's off just a bit. And that time, he just missed Jory. And again, by his reaction, I think he wanted Jory to get out there a little bit quicker because he had an obvious yep. touchdown. Mortensen, 3 of 14, almost exclusively in the air. Just a couple of runs sprinkled in here in this third quarter. Now he goes to the corner route, which is complete intended for Wilkerson. See, I mean, he's, he's, it's right there. He's got open receivers, and his timing is just off. you got to cut the guy a little bit of slack here. You know how many times he gets a chance in practice to work with the first-team offense? Well, realistically, very, how much very, time does a three get? Very, very, little. very little. I mean, you, you get two quarterbacks ready more often than not exactly. for a typical week. And this guy might, in individual drills, occasionally one-on-one -on -one drills, work yeah. with the first-team receivers. But as far as team practice, working with the full team, you're dealing with primarily the first-string quarterback and then occasionally put in the backup. His opportunities for work increased when the starting quarterback, Matt Perry, was yeah. out. But then if Perry was coming back the last three weeks, he was getting almost all of the snaps in practice. They run right here with Dr. Puna, hurtling inside the 10, a yard shy of a first down. So we're going to have fourth in the yard coming up as we duck inside five minutes, eat third quarter. Pacapuna wants the football in his hands yeah. every play. I mean, he, he's, I think he's, in the second half, he's been able to get things going and he's showing you a little bit of that Luke Staley attitude. Remember how many times we came in here to watch Luke Staley run the football? I think we saw his first game and he cut right into the end zone and he made a big play and we thought, wow, I think this is a great opportunity to give Pacapuna another chance. Remember, they tried him in short yardage before, and they stuffed him in the middle. Yep. Maybe off the tackle Swings or outside. Swings to the outside. Yep. BYU will take a timeout. Vakapuna, nine carries for 61 yards. Well, we mentioned earlier your Heisman picks. Top three Heisman choices for the guys, and fourth and less than a yard. Coming up as we continue on a snowy night from Provo. Earlier tonight, our stat man supreme, Marty Aronoff, points out BYU had a 14-play drive that ended on a non-conversion of a fourth down in the red zone. They could have the same thing here on play 12, 12 of this drive, fourth and less than a yard. Vakapuna has a lead back, Kyle Wilson, who gave enough of a space for Vakapuna to pick up what looks to be a first down. It's marked right on the yellow line. And they'll bring out the chains of measure. Four forty-one here in the third quarter as Gary Croton's team has run the boatload of plays here in this third. That was a great effort there by Vakapuna just to get it close. And he got it. Let alone pick it up. Nice job. Uh, and I like the play call that time by Robo Bosco, Bobby Bosco, excuse me, to get around the outside. Look, remember we talked about he went to the inside too many times, went to the off corner, and I liked his effort, but I also liked the call. Yeah, and Boise State, I think, expected that. Yeah. So they were blitzing from the outside. It forced the fullback, Kyle Wilson, to pick up the blitz, and it also forced Vakapuna to cut underneath that outside blitz. And that's why I said he had to break a couple tackles just to get the nose of the ball across the first down marker. BYU has three receivers down here on the near side. It's first and goal for quarterback Todd Mortensen out of Tempe, Arizona. 
He runs it inside the 10 and the 5. And Mortensen's taken down to the 3. Doesn't go down. Well, be careful, BYU, not to pick up a silly flag there. His progress was stopped. Mortensen. His dad, Fred, was the quarterback at Arizona State, 1975 to 1977. He was, uh, as so many of the BYU players, a mature young man at age 24. He has already served his mission, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He served his mission in Venezuela and was recruited by Arizona State, Northwestern, Ohio State, Columbia, Dartmouth, and chose to come here to Burma. Second and goal. Vaca Puna is sent back. Travis Berger, the senior strong side linebacker, forces third and goal. Vaca Puna has a bright future. He's a freshman. They like him because he can play the fullback position when they're healthy at the tailback spot and then also when they get into a jam and they need somebody to carry the ball out of the, the eye back he can do that as well which he's done here in the second half he's one of these downhill runners you give him time to build up momentum and he's a handful it'd be better off if they could bootleg or fake it and get to the outside third and goal they were an option Mortensen ducks it under and gets stopped at the line it's a couple of runs from the quarterback who's down to their third quarterback. I don't really know if I'd be doing that. But fourth down, and those Boise fans, the few that are here, are still here. They're hearty and loud. Made the five-hour drive. And they're trying to encourage their defense here on fourth and goal. Well, you got an offensive line that's 320 pounds per man. You outweigh Boise State by 60 pounds. You've got a 229-pound fullback running tailback. You ought to be able to make a yard, would you think? Yep. If you want it, as much as the other guys. We'll take another timeout before another fourth down. The 17th play of this drive is coming up. Gary Croton asking how far does he have here. The officials reminding him to stay back on the sideline. BYU trying to avoid a fourth straight home loss. The last time that happened was 1968. That's why there's uh, heat, as Lee mentioned. You know, when you lose at home, yeah. it takes on a whole different level of uh, angst from a program that knew nothing but success because of the presence of Hall of Famer Lavelle Edwards. But a situation like this, I know Robbie Bosco and Todd Bradford are called plays, but as the head football coach, you're responsible for fourth down. You don't put this responsibility on someone else. You go over and tell them exactly what you want right now. Really, that's, even even with a guy who's called plays all the I game is in a rhythm. Mike, there was a rule I always had that I had the coordinators. Mm -hmm. Fourth down was my call. Because I don't want them to put the pressure on them if they did But fourth down was my call. It's like also after what? the game, you're the one that everyone's going to be yeah, the finger. But I, I wanted fourth down. I, I wanted the pressure of fourth down. You can call them all except fourth down. When to go for it or what kind. Fourth and goal, BYU looking for its first touchdown of the night. Vaca Puna up and over the top. Touchdown, Cougar. 28-10. to 10. Thing about going for two yep. because if you score here it becomes a, a two it's a 16 point game but you had two timeouts during this drive to talk about that oh. that can't happen 28 to 10 if you get the two you get to 28 to 12 and then it gives you two more eight point touchdown and two point conversion situations to tie the game and i don't know if you guys saw what just happened a second ago when Vacapuna went across the end zone, he started to go out and make that uh, look like he did, and that official grabbed him and put it back. I like that. Was, that. that I, I like thank that you, too. Kirk. I, I like that. That was official. That's official that shows you what he knows what's going best for the football player. You'll hear the whistle, too. You'll hear the whistle kind of give him a warning call, like, let's go. Watch. Vacapuna, watch it out of there. Now, watch this official. Listen to the whistle. No, 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 no. Don't do that, yep. young man. Yep. 
that's a good official. That is. Instead of waiting for him to do yeah. something silly and, and then flagging for 15. Oh, that was a good official. Well, BYU has exhausted all three of its timeouts here on this 17 play drive. And 28 to 10. You mentioned Robbie Bosco calling the plays. All the plaudits uh, and success of the BYU quarterbacks over the years. And Robbie Bosco is the one with the championship ring from that uh, 1984 team. That has uh, become part of the news story here this week as the Senate Judiciary Committee has held hearings on the BCS and the 84 BYU team is often the one stated as an example of a non-BCS team having a chance in the national championship mix or not having it in the current system. Todd Morrison throws for two. Wide open Christensen. Conversion is good. The officials worked together to make sure the headline on the near side had possession. The official in the back had him inbound. So it is a 16-point game. Well, they motioned Christensen over, and when they did that, Boise State couldn't make the adjustment. You can see the defensive back. By the time he got over there, the ball was already thrown. And I think the hesitation there was because his feet came out of bounds, but his shoulder came down inbound. Definitely, the, the conversion is good. But a point made about those officials. They talked to each other and made the right call. So Same far, guy there. I'm, well, I'm yeah. telling you, those two plays right there show me that they're well-trained in the Mountain West as officials. Those are two good calls. Oh, 28-12, and BYU is back in this game. They eventually did the right thing. Unfortunately, they had a wasted timeout for it, just coming off a timeout but so much of the focus on trying to find a play to get in the end zone. The discussion of going for two or not did not come up at that point. Well, they can rely on a defense that's been playing very well here in these last few series. They have forced Boise State three and out, two straight series. Look at Boise's offense, guys. 48 plays tonight, 157 yards. This is a Boise State offense that's one of the most potent in the country, averaging 518 yards per game, third nationally. And coming off a game where they yeah. put up 77, so. But I think the weather has something to do with it. Oh, yeah. that, Slipping and a quarterback yep, yep. throwing and, you know. Dinwiddie's not been able to get comfortable at no, all. Yeah. The weather and, BYU, and again, BYU's defense. Yep. A little attempt to kick return from three yards deep. And Chris Carr brings it out to 20. Six yard line. Well, guys, we mentioned earlier the Heisman Trophy candidates trying to take shape here as we head into November. What's your top three right now, man? Let's see. Well, they have Jason White from Oklahoma at the top of the list. Manny, Manny, the reason I have Manny in there, not only does he has Heisman numbers, he's doing it with this, this uh, one of the worst defenses in, in the oh. SEC. The second, second worst defense yeah. in the SEC. But I love you. You know, I love you. Your two preseason guys were Eli Third. Manning and John Navarro. Well, I, I'm loyal. I know. Yeah, I, plus the bar. If the bar wins the rest of his games yeah. on television, yeah. he will move over some guys. Yeah, I, I, I put. I think Jason White, everybody's picking. It's yeah. almost by default at this point. He's quarterback of the number one team in the country. Sure, he's putting up big numbers. Larry Fitzgerald's the best player in the country. If we're going to give the Heisman Trophy to the best player in the country, you throw it to Pittsburgh, and the way Larry Fitzgerald has played, he deserves it. So that's that's the third guy on your list. Though. Third guy, I decided. You know what? I'm every week. I'm trying to find another guy. After seeing Josh Harris in person. He is as good a quarterback that I've seen all year. He can hurt you running. He can hurt you throwing. They've built a system around what he can do in the last couple years. I will put Josh Harris on that list. He deserves it. And the Bowling Green team, I know, Lee, you like this Boise State right. team. I'll take Bowling Green right now as a top 15 team without any question. Dinwiddie, first down toss. is complete to Gilligan. Tim Gilligan down the sideline. Has a block. Has the speed. Tim Gilligan, 20. the five well, there goes the momentum BYU <laughs> 68 yards later the senior out of Elko Nevada Tim Gilligan well, they scored a touchdown on this exact same play a little bit earlier you have Gilligan's the inside receiver and he's gonna come to the outside against soft coverage and make a very simple route the football is thrown right on the money, and after he makes the catch, where's the rest of the defense? They cleared in man coverage. Where's the speed? 
I mean, this guy, Gilligan, can run, but I don't, they're very lucky to catch him there. Defensive yep. backs, they've got to adjust once the ball's thrown. Gilligan has five catches tonight for 137 yards. First and goal, Donnie Heck. Stop in the middle for a short game. Maybe he'll give him a yard officially. As we're inside of 90 seconds, as Gilligan comes back out. Hey, Gilligan caught 16 passes for 255 yards against Louisiana Tech. Mike, 255, 16 catches in one football game. Wow. What's interesting to me is Gilligan averages 15 yards a catch. That's pretty good, right? Yeah. But three other receivers on this Boise State team average over 22 yards a catch. A backward pass to Gilligan who fights for the goal line. Oh. Touchdown. Great play. God, who did not start on this team last year, who was a big fan of BYU in the Steve Young era, comes in against the touchdown, 34-12, and up 22, the chart tells you to go for two. As I mentioned, a backward pass, so that technically becomes a run, and Gilligan's first rushing touchdown of the year. He goes for two, and why not? Give it all to Gilligan. <laughs> BYU gained a little momentum, felt like they were getting back into it, but then the huge play down the sideline for Gilligan, and a guy who uh, has some family members who had rooted for BYU in the past. He grew up watching BYU football, comes in and gets the touchdown with hard work, Second of the night, three plays. Boise answers BYU's 17-play drive with the same result. All the energy expended by BYU wiped away quickly as Boise State scored. Sports Center coming up as soon as we're done. The Bickering Oakland Raiders survival Saturday edition of Factor Fiction and Game Two for LeBron James coming up on Sports Center right after we're done. Kickoff taken on the bounce. A head high hit. And the ball is shy of the 20. Well, there's Gilligan. Another 100 plus yarder. You, Barry. We're back home. No Q. I see you, Barry. A young man who told us earlier this week that he's reassured the younger players on this team that having a game on national TV is not a big deal. We've done it before in our bowl games. They are. It is a chance to show people a lot of things, but you can't play any differently. And he's come out in that game on national TV here on a Thursday night with a lot of people getting a chance to see Boise State. And he has uh, lived up to his words of earlier in the week. It's a 7-1 team that is 27 just on the outside of the top 25. Incomplete pass by Todd Morton. I mean, I think Gilligan kind of represents the attitude of the Boise State team and what they try to accomplish and the kind of players that they try to go after. He's a scrapper. I mean, he, he's taken advantage of some opportunities this year to finally become the guy after paying his dues, and now he's, he's capitalized on it, not just tonight, guys, but this entire year. Well, in high school, he won nine letters in football, basketball, and baseball. Quite an all-around athlete. Ten, Fui Vakapuna. Nice cut back by Vakapuna. He gets out to the 24-yard line. Back to Jerry Punch. That guy's Tim Gilligan back uh, two years ago. Remember him? He's sort of the guy that precipitated the halo, halo rule violation coming into uh, the play. Remember, he was a punt returner. He refused to call for a fair catch. And against Tulsa, he got just, just mashed uh, trying to return a punt. They didn't give any room to catch the ball. And the following week against Fresno State on ESPN, he got hit and knocked out trying to return a punt, and those two hits back-to-back -back is what precipitated to what I'm being told, the halo rule that came into effect right. and is now gone. I remember those. Remember that ESPN game specifically. Tough customer, that's for sure. The final snap of the quarter is a completion to Toby Christensen out to the 31. A pickup of six. 
Up we go to the fourth quarter. Boise State in the snow on the way to one of the biggest wins in the history of the program. Off we go to quarter number four here on College Football Thursday presented by Panasonic. Chilly, cold, damp. Happy Halloween. You're on ESPN. There you go. Halloween tomorrow. It has been a scary movie for BYU through the first three. Down 36 to 12. Todd Mortensen, their third quarterback to play tonight, throws incomplete. Down the middle for Toby Christensen. Nivea for men. Game track coming your way. If you're just tuning in, here's how we've... Uh... Oh, wait a second. Will we show you how we've arrived here through quarter number three at 36-12. BYU scored 10 in that quarter on a, their second safety of the night. And a touchdown and two-point conversion. And Boise had a touchdown and two-point conversion of its own just a moment ago. Second and ten for the junior at a Tempe High School in Tempe, Arizona. Underneath Brown, incomplete. Ron Wilkerson, the intended receiver, took a huge hit. Avalos was there. Avalos was on the on the front side there, but Mike Julius Brown yep. again showing some great timing and great athletic ability. It's been all over these BYU receivers. Their whole secondary, Carr yes. and Brown and Nurse Outstanding and group. Third and ten, that's a good look at the BYU defense. You see everybody there moving, shaking, confusing. Mortensen just loading up and just chucking it. Incomplete. You know, like, is that Dan Hawkins? Was that Dan Hawkins down there? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, thought, I thought it was Hawkins. You know, scary thought for me it was how'd you like to play Boise State on that blue stuff that they got you like their field their blue field I'm telling you they I bet you they would be tough to beat up in their place I think their record they only lost one game up there in a while but they would be unbelievable on artificial turf get on that's a fast blue. track with the blue stuff oh they be all over the place Matt Payne's punt Down at the 38. As promised, the Nivea for Men game track. Tim Gilligan, a very big catch in the second. Well, that one in the second quarter is the first touchdown, but a big one here in the third quarter helped get him down the field. As the quarterback, Ryan Dinwiddie, has been solid here tonight. Meantime, BYU is on its way to a fourth consecutive home loss for the first time since 1968. And when he's still in there, Michael, the running back, 15th carry. He now has 54 yards, 53 yards on the night. Is it going to give him two on this run? David Michael, he started off as a safety, and in 1999, they thought they needed a tailback. They moved him back, and he's run... He's run some pretty good. He's had 26 touchdowns in his career. Pretty good running back. 5'11", 205. Michael had two arthroscopic surgeries in the offseason. High ankle sprain, torn knee ligaments. Really was up against it last year health-wise. He will stay healthy this year. Look at him run. This is David Michael from Sacramento. Down to the 15. A pickup after the Aaron Francisco tackle of 44 yards. That, that could be the first guy we said nice things about that did something well. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Michael closing in on his seventh career 100 yard night in 139 against Tulsa earlier this year. Really some big blocks there to set him free. He's got speed, you're right. He can in the open field. He can, he can outrun some people. Michael out. Donnie Heck in. To the two. 
And it's down at the Boise State end. And I uh, mentioned that a few times, the, their loyal fans. You cannot overemphasize how important this is. It, plain and simple, the Mountain West region. This region dominated by BYU football for years. Many of these players grew up with BYU as the gold standard, whether it was the WAC, the Mountain West, in this entire area. And there are also uh, players on this Boise team who are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Mormon Church. Back in the game is Michael. He's uh, going to gain about a yard here. And uh, there is a very large LDS population in Idaho. As a matter of fact, 26% of the population in the state of Idaho, according to the numbers in 1990, members of the uh, Church of Latter-day Saints, that is second in percentage of a state population to Utah. Here in Utah, 71% of the population are LDS members. So for the whole region in Idaho, with BYU being the school for LDS members, it's a very important game for the Idaho folks who are LDS. As Dinwiddie runs in his eighth touchdown of the season. And the route rolls on. After playing so well for the majority of this football game, you've seen a BYU defense mentally shut it down in the last two drives. And the tackling has been atrocious. And that's why Boise State keeps putting on that same pressure, and BYU's not playing with the same enthusiasm. Extra point by Tyler Jones, the second best kicker in Boise State history. Our spotter, Mike Black, has the most field goals in Boise Ooh. State history. Yeah, give Black <laughs> <you> some love. That's <laughs> nice, Black. It's going to be impossible to live with here these weeks as Boise State on top by 31 for Al. Well, they are enjoying the night in Boise. They are not enjoying the night here in Provo. Ah, oh, can we go yet? <laughs> Hang in there, little fella. You don't want to miss one of the greatest comebacks ever if it happens. Or perhaps not. Micah Alba, after the indecision, takes it out to the 25. Well, the last time BYU played a home game, they lost to Colorado State, also on a Thursday night, by 45. This is uh, getting close to going back nearly 50 years, 48 years, for the worst back-to-back -back home losses. And as I've mentioned, it has been 35 years since BYU's lost four consecutive home games. Close out their home schedule against Utah, the annual in-state battle. And if you read, Vakapuna, first down, picked up by the freshman back. Well, guys, what's wrong, what's wrong here? I, you know, it, it, BYU has been, as I started to say before, in this area, the gold standard. Uh, is it just... The injuries to the quarterbacks? Is it uh, the natural dip when somebody comes into a program and takes over? What do you think the issue is here, guys? My opinion, I want to see what you think, Lee. I think he inherited a team that was that was outstanding in his first year where he had a quarterback in Brandon Domini at Luke Staley and he had a lot of other weapons around. I need it. And I think talking to him behind that great senior class was very little as far as experience and talent. And I think it's, it's this year he's been exposed because of all the freshmen that have had to play because they just don't have the upperclassmen. They don't have the numbers. It's going to take him a couple years to be able to bring in the talent and get these young freshmen to grow up in the program. Simplistically, he doesn't have a lot of good football players, and they're playing like they really don't want to play hard. And, I mean, they play hard at times, and then they don't play harder. Even the defense, as hard as they tried, has mailed it in. I, and that's not, that's not a good sign. And it's, uh, it's, it's sad to see BYU in this kind of condition, but they're not a very good football team because they don't have a lot of good football players. Mortensen runs for three. We talked about following Lavelle Edwards with Gary Croton yesterday. He told me right before he left, he says, Gary, you know, it's going to be tough, he said, because he says, I can't live up to myself with the expectations. 
in these last five years, and I just can't live up to my own self. And, uh, you know, just take them one at a time, and, and uh, good things will happen. This is a program that had its first losing season in 28 years last year is now looking at the real possibility of not going to a bowl game for the third time in four years. That hadn't happened since the early 70s. But the Christensen one, makes the catch leads right about at the first down line. Good, but the one positive thing that we've noticed is they've got upgraded their facilities now for the guys. Gary Cohen's got as good of facilities now with oh. the indoor play. Right, Kirby? Oh, my God. What great facilities. As good as they're Val, on this Val Hale, the AD, has given them really as good of facilities as you can recruit them in the whole West. Well, you really helped. Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we, but, we came out here uh, like three, uh, three, four years ago, guys, yeah. and Lavelle Edwards, it has to be four because Coach Edwards yeah. was here, yeah. and we went to visit him in his office, and uh, it, it was an office that Lavelle had been in for over two decades. Yeah. In the, the off-the-field race in college football, passed by Morton's incomplete, out of bounds. You have to have facilities. Well, this is what the facilities look like, the old locker room. This is the new locker room, patterned after the NFL Philadelphia Eagles. These are the old meeting rooms. That was a team in. meeting room. That's right. We sat in there for our meetings with the coaches as well. Look at this new uh, under facility, oh, under a construction. Nice. And the exterior nice. of the new Student Athlete Center, 116 thousand square feet athletic legacy hall nutrition center all of uh, part of the facilities being given to BYU so they can continue to compete with uh, the best teams nationally when it comes to recruiting Vakapuna on the toss it's out to midfield also the indoor field house it also, the indoor field house, Dan Hale told me it was a total price of $31 million worth of new facilities. And this week, with uh, the inclement weather Monday, they were able to get in here and practice for the first time. So they were able to christen this place, although the official opening is still a few weeks away. Able to get in there, 250-yard plus field turf practice fields. 92 feet tall at the highest point. They had the backup punter try to kick it and touch the ceiling, and they couldn't. So uh, a very impressive facility as they have put the infrastructure in for success. Mortensen throws incomplete. Mike, all I can tell you is with those resources and the tradition of BYU football, what Lavelle Edwards is able to establish, he, he's going to be able to recruit great people. He's going to be able to bring in, right now they're missing speed on offense. They've got to go out and find some difference makers at receiver and at running back. And they've got to go out and, I don't know, maybe Matt Berry's the guy, maybe one of these quarterbacks is the guy. But you don't feel that that sense of, boy, this is one of these BYU quarterbacks, that long list of so many great BYU quarterbacks. I don't know, you just, right now, it's not, you don't feel it. You don't have that same sense that they have that capability of hurting you as offense. Gilligan, Pretzel down at the 10. Was he stake, state will take over. Mike Nascimento, the freshman out of Senegal, Utah, made the tackle. ESPN's College Football Thursday, presented by Panasonic HDTV. Breathtaking design and a picture that's in a class by itself. Panasonic, ideas for life. And in part by Nivea for Men Aftershave Ball. More evolved skin care. Well, these guys are enjoying the inclement weather because they're watching something I don't think they ever thought they'd see. Boise State up 31 at BYU. You have to keep reminding yourselves, uh, and if you haven't been up to Boise, you don't understand it, how important it is to this school founded back in 1932, playing football for just the 33rd year. Run by Michael for a couple of yards. Moved to Division I in 1996. And uh, always look, looking up to BYU and its success. Last year, finishing 12th in the ESPN USA Today coaches poll. 27th right now in those rankings. And people seeing them with all the big games this week and a couple of those teams having two losses. You'll probably see Boise State in the top 25. When it comes out on Sports Center at 11 in the morning, 10:30 in the morning Eastern Time on Sunday, Danny Heck on the carry, brought down by Aaron Francisco. 
all the non-BCS non-BCS teams that are out there trying to compete and say, hey, we deserve to be in the top 25. From what we've seen from these guys in, in a difficult set of circumstances with the weather, this team is definitely, definitely deserving of consideration. And Mike, you're right. Within the next week or two, they're going to pop up in there. You mentioned BCS and non-BCS. The Senate Judiciary Committee holding another hearing this week. Uh, Lavelle Edwards mentioned earlier. Uh, one of the people who was there and giving testimony as they continue to just explore the antitrust issues around the BCS. In what he throws. Down the middle. It's caught. By Gilligan, left on the punt return with a cramp, comes back, gets it out to the 34-yard line. Pick up of 21. It, it, it's it's almost like watching an NFL quarterback with a veteran receiver because they've worked together so much. These guys, you can just tell they know what one another what they're thinking. The ball is perfectly thrown, right where it has to be, despite the hold by BYU secondary, thrown into a perfect hole. And he, how about Gilligan? As soon as he makes the catch, he knows to protect himself. These guys are in sync. Gilligan, Gilligan, and Gilligan are perfect harmony. Sorry about Gilligan. Six catches, 158 yards. Michael now over 100 rushing yards here on the night. Well, I mentioned that uh, hearing that uh, happened with the Senate Judiciary Committee. Tell you about that in a second. I want to remind those of you tuning in here for Sports Center at the top of the hour. Charles Woodson had some words about what's going on with the Oakland Raiders. Andrea Kramer, an interview. You'll hear about that. Fact or fiction? Let's see what the guys have to say about Survival Saturday and how LeBron James is doing uh, in his matchup with fellow rookie Carmelo Anthony. Sports that are coming up right after the game. Orrin Hatch, a senator from Utah, and Joe Biden, very two very, very respected senators, Biden of Delaware. Uh, members of the very prestigious Senate Judiciary Committee were in there for the hearing. Yeah. Among those who were heard is many, including the President yeah. Tulane, who's continuing to try to spearhead the whole non-BCS conferences in their uh, goal to be included. A lot of testimony going on in Congress. I don't know if we sent our representatives to Washington to debate the college football playoff system. Weapons of mass destruction. Yes. Iraq. Yes. Homeland Security, yes. a large deficit. There are several yes. major, as many issues as, and I'm a political science major, so I'm not a guy talking out of nowhere. There, there are so many issues out there. Did we send the Senate Judiciary Committee to hold hearings on the college football playoff system? No. Or like, I, I, just, I know I'm not supposed to give my opinion, but that's, that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I mean... It should be settled by the people who administrate college athletics. And actually, you mean the guys who actually follow the sport? Yes, oh. we'll be right back. After the timeout by Boise State, we have third and four coming up inside of seven minutes till we get to sports center. Well, you know, I know Dan uh, Hawkins has won a lot of football games. It's good, but I, I'd like to recommend that he look at his number two quarterback, Mike Sanford. The score is 43 to 12. You beat the crap out of the other football team. You got them all in a row. And why not give Mike? I know, I know Gandhi wouldn't take a knee, and I know Martin Luther, Martin Luther King would not take a knee. But I tell you what, Robert Edison. What's his name? Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison. Come on, man. What are you doing? <laughs> it's late. Is this the Robert would? But Edison would at least put Mike Sanford. Oh gosh, show them. Mike Sanford. <laughs> If we passed 11 o'clock. You, you guys got to have a little love. Making sure you're not sleeping. <laughs> I'm with you, man. Sharp as up. Here we go. We're bringing it home, man. Third and four. Did what he will throw. Oh, oh, no. And he puts it up for hey. Gray to Gilligan. Out to the 36-yard line. Did what he back A pickup of uh, 24 yards number, and a first down. And this is part, part of that whole <laughs> equation, you know. Keep playing. They, they keep going. Well, he said, Mike, he said, start fast and finish. Okay, finish with your second quarterback. <laughs> I got you. I'm just telling you that if the second quarterback gets in, it's going to be the same philosophy. It's one of those things you can't do right. in a league where you're not the dominant team. Because you end up paying for it two, three years can't do, You can't do what? I tell you what, you don't throw on third and four up 31. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
In fact, there was a couple of articles in the paper recently where some of these old Mountain West coaches were getting Gary back for what Lavelle did to him. BYU stays from there. Absolutely. Comes around to get you. And, and it's, it's hard to you go into this whole thing. There they are on their number as they continue to rise in national scoring. When players work all week, what do you do? Do you call off the dogs? And two Hawkins defense slash credit. When they scored 77 against San Jose State, fourth team running back was the leading rusher. Dinwiddie played one series in the third quarter. He pulled him. When they went down to SMU and Dinwiddie had nearly 400 yards passing in the first half, he only played a couple of series in the third quarter and came out. But see, in this case, I don't have a problem with it because they're they're running the football. They're trying to kill the clock on first and second down, but then when they get into third and four, third and five, they're trying to execute their offense, trying to maintain possession. I get, wonder who ran that football that time. It was Michael. Thank you. You, you want the backups. Yeah, I want the backups in here because it's 43 to 12, yeah. and you don't whip a guy that bad and keep pouring on him. That's why I like it. You just don't do it. I don't think he's going to play tonight with five minutes left. Huh? He's got the headphones going here. <laughs> Watch scores go by. You see the NBA scores. Carmelo Anthony in Denver playing Houston. If I misspoke before, we'll see Carmelo and LeBron James on ESPN next week. Oh, good. Tonight, LeBron James in LeBron. action with back-to-back. -back. LeBron really settled in early last night. Started out, what are you, 12 in the, in the first uh, first period alone? Looks smooth, 6'8", 240, another Ohio kid out there working hard. <laughs> see, it always comes back to Ohio. Yeah. It's, not a, it's Ohio always about point. him. No, I'm just saying. Just, you know, throw up an Akron there. He's just working hard up there. Good player. He's doing his best. The guy's got a trip to uh, the old Bedlam series with Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Can't wait. It's fun for college game day. Good by the Home Depot. First down from 25. Michael's going to lose three yards here as he is pushed back. That's just part of a huge survival Saturday on ABC and ESPN. Many of you nationally will see Michigan, Michigan State. What a great season it's been for Sparties. Oklahoma State, Oklahoma. Washington State, USC for those of you out west. And on ESPN and ESPN HD. Number two, Miami. Number 11, Virginia Tech. Who will be standing after Survival Saturday? Coming up on the networks. There are some of the games. The headline games. Three. Matchups of teams in the top 50. Dinwiddie, a second down throw to Gilligan. <laughs> and a flag is thrown on Kit Nielsen of BYU for pushing Gilligan as he ran through the end zone with point 49. Well, well, now they were running right. the ball. I don't right? have an answer. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. Joining us now, Kurt Street. What can you add to the I'm telecast? Sorry. What could you add well, to the telecast about I, them running the ball? I, and you had nothing. I, it was second down. Nothing wrong. It was second down. They were being up post corner. And, uh, 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 Kip uh, Nielsen sitting the soft there. And I guess maybe Dinwiddie got excited. Well, the, I, I guess on one hand, Gilligan goes over 200 yards on the night receiving. Eight catches, 209, two touchdowns. Maybe that's what they were trying to do. And one rushing touchdown. Yeah. That's, that's tough. That's no, tough. I, I, I've been in, I mean, let me tell you something. There's no excuse for this. No. Have you ever played, any, when you were coaching, did you ever play anybody that did that? Because they, they, I mean, they, 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 yeah, they, they did it. Yeah, a lot of times they did it. They, but they wouldn't keep well, I'll coming tell you, after you. You want me to tell you a story about what I did? Yeah. Oh, I hold, can you tell hold me. to the well, break? Yeah, I'll tell you a story. Right. Yeah. Stay tuned. Story. Stay tuned, folks. This is a good story, and it's true. 3.45. Here we go. Back here in Provo and Boise State. Three consecutive possessions with touchdowns to make it a 50-12 to 12 game. And the best uh, night for Gilligan as he goes over 200 yards in this one. The flag for the late hit on Kip Nielsen of BYU is assessed on the kickoff, so they are allowed to kick from midfield and put it right through the uprights. It's been that kind of night for Boise State. Our pal, Mr. Corso, promised a story. Okay. Tell us a story. It's a story time. Big uh, time story. 1982, I had a guy beat 30, had 30 to nothing at halftime. Mm -hmm. 
pretty good football coach named Dennis Green. Yeah. yeah. Right? Oh, I put a, my quarterback was Cam Cameron. I brought him in. I said, you're the number two quarterback. I brought him at halftime and said, you play the second half. Yeah. You do not throw the football. I said, why? He said, you see that guy, Dennis Green, his family? I've been in his position a lot of times. Cam Cameron went in. We never threw the football. Beat him 30 to nothing. That's what you have to do. That's the way you do it. That's the way you do it. I, I, I got fired that year, but that's the way you do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least Dennis Green was happy. He was okay. He I mean, you know, he, he I got, you. That's true. Vaca Puna with the carry there for and a you know, couple. We were here one time before, and I think a guy ran it up on Lavelle Edwards, didn't he? Colorado State. We were in Colorado up, State up a couple years ago. You and Fowler almost came to blows up in the booth that night. Exactly, boy. I never forget that. I never forget that, those things like that. That was wrong. No, I, I, I'm with you. Running the ball was fine. Yeah. Going third down, throwing the ball with 43 12. Uh, that, that was wrong. Second down. Right? Second down and went to the end zone. Just, just. I don't mind Dinkin and Duncan. Keep the, you know, keep the drive alive. But uh, they went to the. New quarterback in the game, Jackson Brown. Ooh, that's just. Hey, Chris Berman would do the running on empty line there, but I'm just going to let it go. And Brown completes it out to the 35 yard line. And that dip into Swaz material. He's got a copy right on that. There is Jackson, the sophomore out of Sandy, Utah. Sandy right down the road here. He did uh, his LDS church mission in Montevideo. Uruguay. Brown running and sliding at the 40. See his uh, first action. We uh, showed it earlier, and if the score stays this way, this will be the worst back to back losses at home for BYU. And both of those Thursday night games on short weeks. 58-13 and 50-12. to 12. BYU had not given up 50 at home passing complete since 1922. And it's going to happen here in back-to-back -back games here in 2003. That's kind of a little bit, you could say, misleading to 50 points. They've scored three straight possessions, but for the most part, early in the game and into the third quarter, the BYU defense was was controlling Boise State's great offense. I mean, they, they they were holding their own, and then all of a sudden, boom, within one possession, it's almost like they just they they ran out of gas. I got a great story to tell you about that one. You, you got another one? Yeah. Go ahead. This, well, we got plenty of time. Third and four, something happened, though. Okay. I'll interrupt your story. Go ahead. No, let's watch it. We'll, do play. we'll watch. Go ahead. Six foot five, 220 pound quarterback, Jackson Brown. Throws it complete to Slater. You know, I, I got beat by 50 one time, and I brought the defensive staff in. I said, how the line play? The guy said, you know what? You'd be surprised, the line coach. He said, uh, they did some good things, and we twisted, did a good job. I said, how the linebackers? The linebackers said, coach said, we dropped, we did pretty good the second day, coach. You know what? Our coverage improved. I said, will you please find that guy to give up 50 points for me? <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> we got beat by 50. <laughs> That happened to be absolutely happy. Oh, man. Oh, Lord. True story. True story, I swear. Jackson Brown's throw. A nice throw. It is punt by Daniel Coates. That tight end still in there working hard. Let's go down to Jerry Punch. Doc? I guess tonight is sort of a special night if you're an athletic trainer. These two trainers, these two teams are both in the Hall of Fame. Gary Crater, 34 years at Boise State, one of the all-time best as an athletic trainer. And across the field, the guy at BYU, George Curtis, a remarkable example of perseverance. George Curtis has had 49 operations on his knees. He had a stroke a few years ago. He's fighting a debilitating progressive neurological illness, and he does not miss a day. He will not give up. He works 100%. And, and one, of the, one, of the, one of the true inspirations among young trainers is George Curtis here on the BYU sideline. I'll tell you what, guys. 34 years he's been in a profession. All the surgeries, the stroke, the uh, Parkinson's he's fighting right now. And he certainly does not want to quit and gives 100% every day. That's a great story, Doc. Thank you. The, the, the people who are around athletic programs who are you know, worth their weight in gold, trainers, equipment managers, the best. Good, good people, the support staff that people don't get to see so often when we watch games. Those are the players. To the players, those are the important people, too. 
50 to 12 here in our final minute 19 with Sports Center on the way and a flag is down. BYU has thrown 56 passes here tonight for 90 plays. Our Wrangler player of the game, Tim Gilligan. We're not going to penalize him for that touchdown there at the end. 209 yards, a couple of touchdowns, one rushing. Huge night for Gilligan. Senior leader guy who walked on a couple of years ago at Boise State is our Wrangler player of the game. Gamer. Mm -hmm. All you have yes, to say about him, he's a gamer. Boise State has the toughest part of its conference schedule ahead, but they answered critics tonight who would point to their 19 and 37 opponents record. Their 1A opponents coming in. Pass is complete. Ryan Slater putting on a clinic here tonight. He's had three catches, first of his career. They play the minors of UTEP and then at Fresno State. Fresno's play a tough schedule at uh, or Nevada at home to close on the blue field up in Boise, and then at Hawaii you'll see the Fresno game and the visit to the 50th state on the family of networks. So they got a shot at being 10 and 1 going to Hawaii with, with a two-point loss to Oregon State. Right. Oh. Did you ever see that yeah. pass is caught? We, if we get a brief second here before we check out. <laughs> the way they lost to Oregon State, that two-point game, oh, which is brutal. That's your favorite it's, call of the year, just, right? Worst call of the year. I've, I've, I've spoken my mind way too much tonight. I, no, what do you yeah. think? Tell Did us. you get that up? Get, we might not get a chance to show uh, us. Okay. All right. Yeah. It's, well, maybe they could call timeout so we could show well, I think I think we've got one more timeout left. Let's see. <laughs> I think we could stop this clock one more time. Boise State has two. If they run offense, they'd use it. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. We can still get out of bounds, too. Sacked. There's Jackson Brown. Wrap it up. Let's squeeze it in. Let's squeeze yeah, it in. let's do it, Jim. They lost to Oregon State. 26-24. Now, this is fourth down for Oregon State. They called that forward progress. Fourth down. They still would need to go down and drive and kick a field goal, but that's one of the worst calls in the history of calls. And Dan Hawkins was smart there, telling his players, have some class, don't complain about the officiating. You had other opportunities to win the game. Final five seconds, this throw incomplete. And we'll have one snap left. <laughs> Forward progress on that call. <laughs> that is a bad call. What, what conference officials? I think they were packed in. Oh, I'm packed not in? Sure. Game was at Oregon State, I'm not sure. It's, it's just, the point is just, it's hard to see it happen like that. But Boise State will come away with a landmark win. You know, there were uh, times six, seven, eight years ago that they never dreamed of playing BYU competitively, never mind playing them here in Provo on national TV and winning by 38 points. But their senior quarterback, Ryan Dinwiddie, on a tough night weather-wise, didn't make too many mistakes. Boise was opportunistic and clearly the better team, and they will move to 8-1 and one with the victory. The game's final play is a throw by Jackson Brown, incomplete, and that, mercifully, is it. Final score, Boise State 50, BYU 12. Coming up next, Sports Center, ESPN News, with continuing coverage. Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, Jerry Punch, Mike Tirico, thank you for watching this presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more college football information, log on to ESPN.com. Keyword, college football. Thanks to our crew, we'll handle the snow. Good night from Provo, and off we go to Sports Center.